And we're live. What's going on, everybody? This is the Child's Play Compendium. I have uh, my shameless guest, <laughs> Willis Greedia here. <laughs> CP, you guys know him. Uh, CP, say hello. Hi. Hi. I'm CP of Willis Greedia. All right. That's enough of you. Now you be quiet, <laughs> and then I'm going to take it for you. <laughs> no. All right, guys. This is uh, – so leading up to the Child's Play remake, um, me and CP wanted to do a video just kind of talking about the whole franchise kind of uh, – diving deep into child's play you guys know a lot of my thoughts if you've seen my reviews and everything like that but uh cp just rewatched uh, a lot of these films for the, uh the first time in a long time i believe mm -hmm. within the past month or so so a lot of his ideas and uh opinions on these films are fresh so uh just overall cp what's your your thoughts on the franchise your experience with the franchise and then uh we're gonna go through these movies one by one yeah so i, I did like a crash course i got that that yellow that yellow set that has all all seven oh, yeah. seven up until now that looks like a, a good guy box mm -hmm. so I, I recently had that blu-ray sent to me and i crash coursed I, I just recently went through all seven in the course of maybe two or three days and it, it in that session i realized that there's i don't think i've seen two or three since maybe the 1900s like wow. it, it was really <laughs> It was a refreshing, like, oh, I, I don't remember these being as decent as they are. Because mm -hmm. my, my most me recent memories are cult and, and seed. And they're, <laughs> they're yeah, they're, they're like, there's there's curse right there in the middle. Like, yeah, you know what, this is, we're going to do, do okay. And then cult, it just is not. So <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a really solid franchise, which we'll get to more on that later. But I, I'm, I'm surprised at the response of... Um, critics and audiences to this because in comparison to stuff like texas chainsaw massacre friday the 13th it's it's a bit more solid there's a bit more yeah yeah it's it's not it's not as loose and and empty as something like friday the 13th is that i mean the last half of friday the 13th is bad <laughs> and child's play just you know th there's two that stick out that that's really that's that's really it yeah, I would agree. You know, before um, before Cult came out, and I would still probably say this after Cult came out, I used to always say that Scream and Child's Play are the most consistent horror franchises out there. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not the best, maybe not a lot of people's favorites. Sure. That can be argued, but um, I, yeah, before Cult, I was like, we really only have one bad Child's Play film. Now I would say we have two, but even two is shit. That's that's rookie numbers compared mm. to some of the other franchises. <laughs> you know what I mean? So right, yeah. Right. I mean, I, I've been a lifelong Child's Play fanatic. I've said it a lot. Child's Play three is the film that made me a horror fanatic. I remember walking into my apartment and seeing my dad watching the movie, and I sat down and I just remember sitting down, old school tube TV with the VHS tape, and just seeing the little plastic, you know, mm. rolling out, and the, the titles Child's Play three, and the rest is history. Um, Always loved Chucky. I mean, it, it him and Freddy. I mean, it, it's like a razor thin difference for which one I love more. Um, I think the Child's Play franchise overall is probably a little bit better movies than the Nightmare over overall. But yeah, um, yeah by average, sure. Yeah, um, but yeah, Child's Play has always been my baby. You know, I've, I've always loved Chucky. He always felt like the underdog. You always hear the big three. I always said the big four because I always feel like <laughs> Child's Play is like right there, like barely out of reach. Mm -hmm. um, some people would argue Leatherface, some people would argue uh, Ghostface, but um, See, but yeah, Child's Play has always been, you know, one my favorite, if not second favorite, slasher franchise. The thing, as as not as a non Child's Play fan, I would say um, the ceiling is lower for Child's Play, but the floor is higher. So like yeah. Halloween is probably a better movie. Oh yeah, for my taste, there's a couple of Friday the Thirteenth, but when it gets bad in, in those franchises, it's it's worse. It's worse mm -hmm. than than the worst Child's Play. So like it's it's a lot more. The median is is different for this. Oh yeah, the spread's a little thinner. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So yep yeah, that that's uh that's our experience with the franchises. Guy, go ahead and chime in on the chat. You guys want to talk about the uh, your love or disdain? Hopefully not for uh for Child's Play. I see Do and Tom uh, Mancini went too far with Seed. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, just a bit, just just, just a touch, just a nose. And then he but, said, um, "Hold my beer for a uh, cult." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, we're gonna dive into every single one of these films, guys. Kind of, we're gonna go over the Rotten Tomato scores, the audience scores, talk about our experience with it, our thoughts on the films. So uh, strap in, because here we go. Child's Play, nineteen. Oh, 
Yes, I had two. I had three. Um, so we hunted down the first one, and I watched the first one actually after Bride of Chucky. Um, and the first one has the most like classic appeal to it, I would say. Like that's the one that kind of has the most like probably the most identity out of the first four. It's mainstreamy like, it is- too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you feel like the the Tom Holland style in mm-hmm. that one. Um, that was the one where you know Don Mancini had a lot of different ideas for his script. Tom Holland came in, rewrote a lot of it, really implemented a lot of what we know for the Child's Play franchises with his rewrites. He doesn't get enough credit for it, I, I think. But um, but yeah, so the 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 baby of uh, the Don Mancini script and the Tom Holland rewrites and the Tom Holland direction gave us Child's Play '88. And it, it still holds up really well. There's there's scenes where they have, I don't know what the politically correct term is, a little person um, <laughs> in a suit that yeah. I don't think holds up as well. You yeah. know, the animatronics still look really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the special effects look really good. There's scenes where you can tell it's a person in a suit and he looks much bigger and taller and it, it just doesn't quite add. Hold, it that, doesn't th- quite... hold that thought. Hold that thought. They can't Uh-oh. hear you. Um, uh, audio back to normal now. Okay. So Uh-oh. everything's okay. Damn, I got to start all over. No, so uh, <laughs> apologies, guys. We're we're using OBS. This is a first time for my channel. It's uh, CP's kind of steering the ship with that one. Uh, so the OBS, if you know anything about it, with ScreamStream, it's a yeah. fickle bitch. Yeah. So uh, I couldn't go perfect. It, it happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, feel free to chime in immediately if there's any it's, issues, yeah, and we'll, it's, we'll it's, get them It's my resolved. fault too, by the way. So if it's a problem, it's my fault. Just just go with that. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> so yeah, so so, so Child's Play '88. It, it's not my favorite. I do think that uh, later on in the franchise, they kind of utilized Chucky better. They didn't realize what they had with the first film, understandably. Mm. Um, so they kind of utilized Chucky a little bit better in some of the other movies. But I still love um, the mystery aspect of it, the POV shots, the kind of the, the subtle question of is Andy really doing this or is it actually a doll? Like you don't quite know if you yeah. really watch the first one, the journey you're supposed to go along. Right. Catherine Hicks is great. Um Sarandon is great. Uh, so Chucky is still really good, even though it's the first time we see Chucky. The the one liners are there. Um, it's a classic. You know, it's an absolute classic. Yeah. Um, so what I, I'm pretty sure I know what happened as as I was setting up these these screens. Um, what I'll do is I think I can put it on when I'm talking. Yeah. So right now, Cody, don't talk so they won't hear you. Uh, I'll put these screens up when I'm speaking. <laughs> um, and what I have is, for some reason, I didn't set up OBS right. So all I have is my audio on these title screens, which I'm not sure if you're looking at your page. I have the stats from Child's Play, the release date, uh, the Rotten Tomatoes score, uh, some other various stats, which I'll go over now because uh, I, I have the floor. <clears throat> uh, in 1988, the highest grossing uh, familiar, you know, slasher horror franchise was Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Uh, with 49 million child's play was the second highest grossing uh, horror movie that year with 33 Friday the 13th part 7 with 19 Halloween 4 with 18 and uh, Hellbound 2 was uh, fifth out of the ho- uh, horror franchises that year with 12 million so you had four major releases come out that year and child's play was was you know there to hang it it was second out of the out of the big four Rotten Tomato score was uh, 67. So, and now we're back to you, Cody. <laughs> so, so I, now that I know what the problem is, uh, when I put that screen up, uh, I'll, I'll do the talking. Or, okay. So I think I, I think I figured it out. Okay, no problem. All right, so um, yeah, the 67% kind of hurts my heart a bit, but then again, I really don't give a fuck about Rotten Tomatoes well, yeah, scores. Well, and it's hard. When you look at these older films before Rotten Tomatoes existed, there's some really weird scores. Um, dude, so it's it's crazy when you look at some franchises, the the, the highs and the lows. Um, well, I, I have an interesting another uh, gem to show everybody. Just And the whole franchise is interesting to see the audience score and the critic score. But I was like, man, this is, this is kind of bullshit. And then mm-hmm. I went and saw... Friday the Thirteenth, Halloween, Scream. How many? How many Scream movies do you think are fresh? One. Oh, okay. So, so you're right. <laughs> <laughs> how many? How many audience sc- scores do you think are fresh for for Scream? Two. Uh, you're, you're off by one, but it, it, it's it's quite surprising that that you know 
man, the, the people that even for the audience scores is really surprising how how that <sighs> horror is not made for Rotten Tomatoes and vice versa, especially when you see the 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 highest scored. Rotten Tomatoes Child's Play movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll get. We to haven't all hit that it yet. Shit. How about that? <laughs> yeah, we'll get to all that. That's that's some crazy nonsense. But um, I mean, do you have anything to add, like thoughts wise on on the 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 movie? No. Like, is it? I'm pretty sure you pretty much agree with what I said. But yeah. I don't know if you had like a different experience with it. Like maybe you watched it when it first kind of was was on the scene. Or yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, that was a that was a heavy rental when on VHS when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um. It, it, you're right. the 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 way they play the movie with the whole, you know, the parents don't know the the adults don't know if it's actually Andy. They play that really well for a while because mm-hmm. you don't you don't see Chucky talking in the beginning because Andy just kind of holds him up to his ear, and oh, yeah. for a little bit you're kind of like, oh, maybe maybe this kid's a little twisted, a little but, fucked in the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it, it 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 was neat how they played it. I mean, I'm I think that has a lot to do with why it had such a mainstream. Mm-hmm. Uh, acceptance but it yeah I, I i can't add much more to what you're talking about with with the first one and talking about holding back that reveal that reveal in the first film is awesome mm. like when Catherine hicks is like i'm gonna throw you in the fire and he's like you're stupid <laughs> so you're like whoa where did that come from like i can imagine when people saw it in 88 they were like whoa whoa yeah. it just came out of nowhere yeah. like when i saw it that was i already knew kind of what to expect <laughs> from chucky but yeah, that that's a that's a great scene where he just kind of comes to life and just lets it all out on the table. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that uh, Child's Play, the original, I want to say it was third in my ranking um, of the franchise. Really, I'm I, I'm, I'm I'm positive it's my third favorite. Um, but it's one that it's it's a lot of the best Child's Play movies for me. It's it's not a whole lot of difference between them. It's not like there's a huge gap. But uh, mm. but yeah, so classic, absolutely. Um, very curious on how much of the original they're going to hold on to with the remake, but we'll uh, we'll get into all that towards the end mm-hmm. of the, the channel. Mm-hmm. By the way, hello everybody in the chat. I didn't mean to not address everybody. We've got Slaughter Cinema, Cinema Junkies, Joey Rios, An- Angel Cruz, Anthony Winter, Tasty Churro, that's an interesting name, mm-hmm. uh, You Dumb Ho. <laughs> Better name. <laughs> right above DeCock. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so hello everybody, by the way. yeah. If, if you guys want to chime in, we'll, we'll, we'll address the chat here and there, but we have a lot to cover, so uh, by no means are we ignoring you guys, mm-hmm. but we'll kind of, we'll go to you once in a while. Um, so yeah, so moving on, I believe it was 1990 that Child's Play 2 came out. I can, don't say anything. Yes, 90. Come back. Go ahead. You can okay. talk. <laughs> yes, yeah, so 1990 Child's Play 2. Now this one, it, it's in heavy competition with another film later on in the franchise for my favorite. Like it's one of those <laughs> things where one day that's my favorite and one day Child's Play 2 is my favorite. But uh, as of right now, Child's Play 2 is my favorite in the entire franchise. You know, Child's Play 2, to me, it takes what was great about the original, especially Chucky, and it just kind of runs with it. It's a bigger movie. Uh, Chucky's much more of the star of the film. He gets a lot mm. more to do, a lot more uh, one-liners. You get the addition of Kyle, which I think is a really good counterpart for Andy. Andy is a much better actor in this film. Um, some of his line delivery in the first film, which understandably child actor, but annoys me. He used to d- drag out his lines a lot. Mm. Like, you know, Chucky wants to watch the 5 o'clock news. news. And it takes forever. And it's like, <laughs> there's not 37 W's in news. Okay, come on. <laughs> but, um, uh, and then you got it. That third act is like one of the greatest third acts in slasher history to me. Uh, that whole thing in the toy factory. Yeah, and- really fun, too. So something yeah. unseen. Any, not, nothing close to that has, has been shown in a horror movie until that point. Yeah, it's, just, it's the setting, it's the claustrophobia of all the mm. different boxes and like the, the kind of like the shining hedge maze effect. Mm. And it's also just Chucky because at that point in the film, like once you get to the, the scene when he finally gets Andy where he wants him, he does the whole chant a day do a dumbbella mm. and it's too late. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, you little fuck, you're going to die <laughs> now. And you're like, oh, and it's it's that's the act where he's trying to kill Andy. And he's never done that before up to that point. And Chucky gets his hand torn off and sticks a knife there. It's like Evil Dead 2 for a minute. He gets his legs chopped off. He still is coming at him. It's just that whole third act is just awesome. Like that is the greatest child's play anything to me. Um, I also love the fact I forget the actress's name, but it's the teacher whenever uh, um, she's trying to put Andy in oh, Is that the out. bitch who jumps off the bus in speed? 
Dude, that, that she's one? the bitch in every movie. Yeah, That's yeah, a, I never yeah. remember her name, but she's, she's in Donnie she's Darko really, too. Yeah, she's the character <laughs> actress you call when you have a bitch you want everybody to hate. She's the fucking sparkle motion chick <laughs> yeah. from Donnie Darko. She's the bitch who gets blown up in speed. Yeah. She's the one who gets fucking Llewellyn killed in. Uh, no Country for Old Men. Oh my God, that's right. Every movie she's in, she's even a, a twat in um, uh, that movie. What the hell is it called? Uh, Extract. I don't know if you've seen that. With, oh uh, yeah, the Mike yeah. Judge she film. starts the coup where they where they, yeah. they go on strike. That's right. <laughs> every movie she's in, she sucks. So this is the one movie where like every time I hate her, I like to watch this because it's like Chucky gets over on her, and it's just <laughs> it's great. So yeah, that whole thing. Um, yeah, I, I love Child's Play too. I really, even when I said it in my review, I really have almost nothing negative to say about the film. It's just, it's, it's an awesome slasher film. It's one of the best slasher sequels of all time. It's my favorite Child's Play film. Mm. Um, I, I will show some stats while I start talking. Uh, so it came out in 1990. Funny, the exact same release date. Uh, Child's Play 1 came out November 9th, 1988. Uh, Child's Play 2 came out November 9th, 1990. Uh, it was the third highest grossing in the franchise as far as uh, cinema is concerned. Uh, 1990 was a little a little flat, uh, excuse the pun, for horror releases. Flatliners was the highest grossing in America with 61 million. Predator 2 uh, was second with 31 million. Child's Play 2 was third with 29 million. And The Exorcist 3 was fourth with 26 million. Uh, and the Rotten Tomatoes score was 44. And now you're back. Um, the the thing, I, I somebody brought up the cinematography before in the chat. You talked about the third act. That I think the juxtaposition of like all this color of the factory, and especially like when he starts, is it two or th- it's it has to be two where like he's on the the conveyor belt and like all yeah. these different pieces around. Like it's it it's this combination of like bright toy color and just like chaos and and it, it just gets really really hectic and, and messy and, and and i think this is the first time you realize that chucky's bloody too mm-hmm. so like it, it yeah. was really a really interesting combination with with the the, the fun atmosphere of a of a toy uh, toy factory gone to complete shit and um i think i, I spoke to you about this privately when i was watching this but I think of all the franchises, and we'll get to it again, Child's Play could be the most steady with with continuity because it's oh, it's, yeah. it's the same oh, Andy, yeah. and and it you know it the storyline still makes a bit of sense going forward. But you know how often do you have one and two that kind of feed off each other? It's it surprisingly it's it's not that often. Yeah, and that that's one of the things that's great about the series. That's also one of the reasons why people are so passionately against the remake and they're so on Camp Don Mancini because this is the one franchise pretty much that he's kind of kept in check for the most part. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of trailed off a little bit the last couple, but for the most part kept it in check all along. Um, you see a lot of pa- fans' passion because of exactly what you just said. Mm-hmm. Um, and what you were saying too about f- seeing that Chucky was bloody too, you got to give big props to the practical effects towards the mm. end too. Cause there's like, even the scene when his hand is caught and he just rips it out, like there's tendons and blood squirting and everything. It, it looks real. Like yeah. it doesn't look like a doll pulling his hand off. It looks like somebody pulling their hand off and it's yeah, they go for it. Yeah. So, so rewatching this recently <clears throat> and the conveyor belt scene, it reminded me of, of just how much, Star Wars fucked up with Attack of the Clones because if you just compare those two conveyor belt scenes, there's one with tension and one with, I don't know, shitty video game effects to it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <clears throat> all right, cool. Yep. So yeah, that that's Child's Play Two is one that I could just throw on at any time. Like when I was actually reviewing the film series, I I, I reviewed them in order, and even when I was editing, like three bride of chucky seed sometimes mm-hmm. i would just throw in child's play 2 for the background while i was editing it's just one of those movies that i'll probably never get tired of yeah. um which brings us to i believe 91 i think it was one year later mm-hmm. uh for child's play 3 <laughs> and <Spoiler>. uh, <laughs> yeah um i have a strong love for child's play 3 that i don't yeah, find got to get out of this body I forgot that he talked. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I have a strong love for Child's Play 3 that uh, I find Cody, is Cody, not... Cody, it doesn't talk. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's uh, no batteries in that doll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Live death. Sorry. I had to get some views. Um, damn, you can't even see him. I'm trying to keep him somewhat in the frame here. All right. Um, I don't find that Child's Play 3 is very uh, well received with a lot of fans, especially non Child's Play fans. And I'll be honest with you, I've never understood it. I've never understood it. Like I can hear like like certain scenes or certain like individual lines I can see it, but for me, I've always found that Child's Play 3 gets a lot of the same things right that Child's Play 2 gets right, but Child's Play 2 just got there first. So everybody kind of views it as like, "Oh, it's 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 been there done that." Um which is kind of a fair thing. Um you know, it is the same storyline once again, he's trying to get into a kid's body, but uh, it's to me, I think that um, it's got some of the best Chucky one-liners. Like, don't fuck with the Chuck is one of the primo, you know, Chucky one-liners. I like the opening and the the, the guys, uh, the 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 CEO's office with all the different toys yeah. and everything. Yeah. Um, I actually like the military setting as a little bit of a change. Not all the characters are awesome, but there's definitely entertainment there, even with the bad ones. Like the the guy that does all the haircuts, who's like weirdly obsessed oh, with everybody's yeah. hair. He's like, come on, come see me later, and. Um, uh, the, the dickhead, like, uh, sergeant or whatever he is. I don't know the rank, but the, the guy who's in charge that gives him shit the whole time. Uh, the nerdy guy, um, I'm blanking on the names cause I'm just talking live, but, uh, I do, if I was not live, I'd probably be able to tell him, <laughs> but, um, I like the military setting. I, I don't mind Justin Whalen as Andy. I think the movie would have been better suited to have, um, the same care, the same actor back again, but, uh, it's, 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 it doesn't bug me. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really care for the new kid, uh, Justin. I don't really care for him as an actor. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's a really, really like naive and ignorant kid because it just all the thing he just ignores all the telltale signs that he's in danger the entire movie up until it's too late. Um, and then you get to the third act, and I think the third act, even though they're they're oh, I. It might have even been you that griped with the distance between the the fair and the I'll military get to that. camp. Yeah, yeah. But um, that logic issue aside, mm-hmm. I think the third act is actually pretty awesome in this movie too. The whole thing with the roller coaster rides and him getting part of his face chopped off, I think, looks awesome. The, I think it's the best death of Chucky in the entire <laughs> franchise, yeah. where he gets thrown into the fan and stuff like that. So. Um, I always have a ton of fun with Child's Play 3. Obviously, I'm biased because I grew up with it. It's the movie that started it all for me. But even rewatching it as an adult, I, I try to watch things without nostalgia goggles, and I still think it's a damn good Child's Play sequel. It just it, it gets a lot of the same things right that 2 did, but 2 just got there first. You and we, ha- we have a super chat from John R. Wood. Thank you so much, man. Hey, man, been a fan for a while. Love your work. Keep going strong, bro. I was wondering what's your favorite kill. Well... Funny you should mention that because <laughs> I actually have a slew of Child's Play content that I'm going to be releasing the week after the rebake comes out. Excuse me. Whore. Um Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, so there's going to be a few rankings, and provided it's not the ridiculous amount of work that uh, the Halloween one is, which I don't think it is, uh, I'm planning on having a Child's Play kill ranking the week after the remake. So I'm going to... Hold off on answering your question, but I will mm. say one of my favorite kills uh, in the franchise, which um, I'm trying to think, like, I want to give it one one that's not like in my top two or three. Mm. I, the one that I said earlier with the the, the killing the teacher with the, him walking with the yardstick, even though you don't get to see like gore or anything, that's probably one of my favorites that's not like an obvious pick for my top five. So I'll, I'll give you that one, but stay tuned for that. For my uh my number one, I don't want to spoil it here, but thank you so much for the super chat, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um. So to get w- to what you were talking about and, and hinted at. So again, I recently just rewatched this, and and I think three is probably the one I've misremembered the most or forgotten the easiest, because mm-hmm. a lot of it I, I I just remember the the military school aspect, and if there's anything that i have issues with as an outsider because again if you want to talk to me about friday the 13th i know i know there's so much wrong with that franchise but i can just only (laughs) only shrug and say i kind of like it though (laughs) there's nothing but hypocrisy coming from me that's all i could say the the fact that uh they contrive it with uh the dolls are in the like why would there be chucky dolls in a military school like it it kind of it was counteractive for a bit that 
like that was a small thing that like I, I couldn't I couldn't let it get out of my head for a while. It's just like wait, if this is so, supposed to be so hard edge, why is there why is there a, a Chucky doll? Again, still still pretty good with the continuity, but this is the first time that the Child's Play franchise does the horror franchise thing and advances a couple of years for the sake of movie. Like I don't mm-hmm. know why. Like all right, so you, you need to have Andy a little bit older. Uh, okay, I, I guess I get it. You could have just said he had a growth spurt or something, but um, that's 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 not a gripe. It's just like a little nitpicky thing. Um, the 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 locate they're they're in the middle of nowhere, and <laughs> the location of the 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 carnival from the the. Uh, anything there's the like field. this yeah there's this <laughs> forest like there's this one shot where they're on the top where where the Andy and the and the chick are I think they they're being held by gunpoint mm. and and they're overlooking to the the carnival and it's just in the middle of nowhere and in my head I'm like why would they put that carnival in the middle of absolute nowhere woods bumblefuck but I agree with you the location of the carnival with um the whole third act, I was I was down with. It was it was the the first two that I felt were were kind of weird. If they had the whole movie take place at the carnival, I I feel like see this is this was my constructive criticism brain going off. I was like, you could have just had the whole movie take place here. Have somebody drop off a Chucky doll to give away as a prize and like a, a dunking thing, and, and like that's how it kicks off. Like him just fucking around at a um, at a carnival. I mean, and you if you really want to shoehorn the idea in there. Get, have it be that Andy's at that same carnival for reasons, but I, the, 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 the military school thing was with the exception of some of the later stuff of the first four movies, the military school part is probably my least favorite of the 1990s child's plays. Gotcha. Okay. Well, you know, oh, wait, to I'm your s- point, yeah, to your ahead. point, to, to your point about the uh, carnival being in the middle of nowhere. Actually, if you follow Camp Crystal Lake, you can reach the ocean. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, yeah, there's a there's this little, it's this little trail of water. You can... no, I'm just fucking with you. No, I, I you're right. you're absolutely right. Uh, wait, um, let, let me read the the thingies for three before we go further. All right, so uh, it came. This is the first, I think, the only summer child's play release. Oddly enough, it came out August thirtieth, nineteen ninety one. Uh, it is the lowest theatrical release with 21 million worldwide. Uh, in 1991, you had a heavy hitter by the name of Silence of the Lambs with 131 million. Freddy's Dead was the second highest grossing with 35 million. <laughs> uh, People Under the Stairs was third with 24 million. And Child's Play 3 in America made 15 million. And that Rotten Tomato score is 29. <laughs> dude, dude, for, somebody said it before rotten tomatoes is made for a 24 in 71 percent of you right <laughs> um yeah i mean like it, it's it's no secret that child's play 3 is one of the least mm-hmm. loved um a, a lot of people i think even sean chandler our buddy sean chandler did a ranking of it and i think he even put child's play 3 just above seed because to to I think the the been there done that aspect of it was l- less interesting for him than hmm. some of the wildness of cult and all that. I could be misquoting him, hmm. but um, it, it's I've I've heard that argument a lot with Child's Play three that you know eh, these movies are bad but they're weird and they're out there. Child's Play three is just Child's Play two again, which I guess, but I mean Child's Play two is the shit, so I'll take it again. Yeah, um, yeah. As a Friday the Thirteenth fan, I, I I don't like that as an excuse. I just I think the military school thing is just so. Why? 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 It's love or hate. Yeah. Love or hate. Like I said, you make that third act, stretch that, and make that the whole movie. Just Chucky running around a, a carnival. Fuck. Where do I sign? Yeah. Let's keep that idea. If this uh, remake <laughs> hits, we'll, we'll make a script. Child's Play Two, all in a carnival. And then you can have the Toy Story characters run around in the background trying to do their thing. <laughs> the claw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So, all right. So, Child's Play Three. So, from here, I think it's is it ninety six? Ninety eight. This is on the oh, heels wow. of Scream, so yeah, there, there was like so. Child's Play came out th- that first year, eighty eight. It came out the same year as a Friday the Thirteenth, a Nightmare on Elm Street, and a Halloween, and so it was at the Child's Play came out at the tail end of the big three sat slasher craze, and then Child's Play three. Did I say Child's Play three the first time? I meant Child's Play. Child's Play three 
was kind of the end for a bit because people were just like, we're, we're kind of done with slashers. And then Scream happened in 96 and then bang, you were getting all of these, uh, I know what you did last summer, stuff like that. So it, yeah. it was it was a while before we got another child to play. Yeah, okay. So 98 then, Bride mm-hmm. of Chucky. This is the other one that is in constant like battle for my favorite. Mm-hmm. I love, unashamedly, Bride of Chucky. This was the first one that I saw in the theaters. It's the only one that I've seen in the theaters that I've liked because the only <laughs> other one I've seen in theaters was Seed. Um, but we have a uh, Bride of Chucky was like a reinvention of the franchise, a reinvention of the character, a reinvention of kind of the model of the movie. It, it, it changes the plot a bit. And to me, this is in contest for the most fun of the franchise. Mm-hmm. Like you have the addition of Jennifer Tilly, the only movie that she's great in, if, if I can be honest. Um, but her character of Tiffany really gives the movie some new life. Um, the design of Chucky, this is my favorite design of the doll in the entire franchise is the way he looks in Bride. I love the scarred look. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the one liners are some of the best and the comedy is some of the best in any of the films. Um, the back and forth, um, chemistry between Jennifer Tilly and Brad Dorff is like on fire. The whole movie. I really, a lot of people kind of, uh, give me shit because I'm more of a continuity stickler for certain things, but they, Mm -hmm. they, that I, I, I don't mind the whole heart of Dumbala thing. And mm-hmm. to me, it's just it, it's it's a quick little detail to get the plot going. They don't yeah. really they don't make the whole movie about the heart of Dumbala. That's why it works for me. Okay, so this is why we're not following Andy again. Fine, I'm on board. And if the movie sucked, that would be a gripe of mine. But the movie's awesome in my opinion, so it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, but the whole little road trip thing about we have to get to Charles Lee, Charlie Ray's body to get this amulet because this amulet will allow us to get in and out of a body regardless how long we've been in these these doll bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of just the marriage humor, the the, the relationship humor that <laughs> anybody that's in a, in a relationship or has been in a relationship can relate to. It's all legit stuff that you fight about. And it's two murderous dolls complaining about doing dishes and shit like that. So <laughs> uh, it's, it's got some great kills. There's a great kill. This this would be a, a one that I probably should have said for the, the super chat question, which uh, when he uh, Tiffany throws the wine that's bottle my favorite. the glass. Yeah. And the, mirror? the wine bottle, yeah. the, the mirror, and it just comes down and just slays yeah. people. And he's like. I love you. Like, <laughs> it's it's awesome, you know. And, and you know, I think that Ronnie Yu is a really underappreciated horror director because mm-hmm. he directed this and he directed Freddy vs. Jason. And I know people have their their, their issues with Freddy vs. Jason, but I love that one fun. too. And he just makes fun movies. Yeah. They're a blast to watch. The soundtrack is great. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got Judas Priest, you got Rob Zombie. Um, I love Bride of Chucky, and it, it left the series really ripe for like a great reinvention the whole tease at the end about child uh, the the child coming out mm. of the body like it, it sucks that it, it led to seed mm. but i mean <laughs> whenever we walked out of the theater from seeing bride it was like chucky is back yeah yeah well like you said you know, the whole andy thing whatever it, it this still falls under under decent enough continuity because yeah. you know what he, he ran out of time with Andy and, and they discussed that now it's his ex-girlfriend who's trying to bring him back. It's, it's, it's a small pivot. So she's, she's, you know, doing the, the voodoo for dummies, which, you know, small laugh line, whatever. Great. Um, mm-hmm. I, th- I think the problem with the success of uh, bride, which I'll get to those stats now while I have the floor, um, Bride of Chucky was released, again, uh, a lot of October, November releases for the Child's Play franchise, which is even more surprising for what's coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, October 16th, 1998, 51 million worldwide, second best in the franchise. Uh, it was competing with other 1998 releases uh, as Halloween H2O, 55 million. The Faculty, 40 million. I still know what you did last summer, 40 million. Urban Legend, 38 million. And, and then you have Bride of Chucky with 32 million. Rotten Tomato score of 46. Uh, again, you list off Halloween, The Faculty, I know what you did last. Like, 98 was a strong year for, for horror. Faculty's really underrated, if you ask me, but we're not doing a faculty stream. Um, the The stuff about introducing Jennifer Tilly's character and and her bringing uh you're back on by the way sorry <laughs> the faculty is the shit <laughs> yeah so uh the, the way that they bring chucky back through somebody else that that small pivot it it works for me because you know it so she she read up on on how to bring him back and now they have to 
you know, go get it. it it's like you said, it, it's a small little thing to, to A, get the story going. They got to, you know, it's it's a bit of a it's it's some conflict. How, how do two dolls go go to a, a a cemetery, which, you know, I remember thinking, misthinking the the thing like before I resaw it this last month, I was like, why wouldn't she just go back to his body? But she only learned that after bringing him back. And mm-hmm. then they got in a fight, and oh, you shrank. Uh, tell me more about. Tell me more about your your body there, Cody. I'm just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'll, I'll say this about Bride of Chucky too: they don't really miss any beats with the comedy. Like they pretty much squeeze every joke you could out of the situation. Even when they get to the cemetery, I love the line when they're trying to pull the, the amulet off, and he's like, "Bitch, you broke my neck." <laughs> so it's it's it's. It, that's one of the movies where the comedy is pretty much it, it hit for hit. There's not a whole lot that falls flat in that one. And it and it's and it's done uh, with the right amount. You know, it's seasoned well. It's not over mm-hmm. the top like a certain film that follows does. It you know it's oh yeah. It's got comedy to it. It's it's kind of Jason Livesey, kind of screamy with a comedy and 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 stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's it's not it's not. It's it's a horror first, and then there's funny lines in it. Uh, yeah. There's some black humor for for death, which you know at that stage. <laughs> the, the, Have fun with it, yeah. Right, right, and you know we're gonna lose touch with that. And, and oh, and how couple. great is John Ritter? How great is oh, John yes. Ritter in that movie? Like his character is awesome. The lines that he has guy. are That's awesome. That's the first time we saw him as like yeah, a he's bad a dude. Dick. Yeah. And he gets the funniest deaths in the movie, like like the way that they uh, they. It's not really a death, but it's almost death when they shoot the oh, yeah, the, the nails the, the nails into his face. And like, why does that look so familiar? <laughs> like it's just so perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. All that's great. And I see a couple people asking in the chat. Yes, I am definitely doing a review for the faculty at some point. That will be coming. I'm not saying it's happening in a week, but um, me and CP might even collab on that because if we both have passion for it we might do that so i I just told cp what he's doing i want to do something else first but yes yes we have something else in the works first that's to sex coming soon yes exactly (laughs) only available through uh adam and eve somebody said disturbing behavior i don't i can't check right now but i I don't think that was 98 i think that was 97 but i certainly could be wrong i like that one too that one's pretty underrated too yeah not nearly on the faculty level but 96 after after scream which was late 96 there was that that resurge in horror and you have some really like some decent hitters that are considered underrated by mainstream audiences and the late 90s were it was a neat time to be a horror fan especially with me being a, a teenager at that point it was it was really it was really fun and then the 2000s happened and and yeah. And then it stopped being fun. <laughs> and then take it away, Cavender's hair. <laughs> <laughs> a little shout out for Zach there. Uh, address the chat one more time. Slasher fan one thousand and one. Cody, can you rank the Chucky one liners and rank Chucky looks? Hmm. All I will say is that I'm going to be whoring out the week after Child's Play. So just uh, stay tuned for that whoring. Um, <laughs> all right. Well. The best years are behind us now. Yep. <laughs> Time for the downward slope. <laughs> um, 2004? Yep. yep. Yeah. See, I'm pretty good with the dates. Mm-hmm. 2004, Seed of Chucky. Let me set the stage. Uh, so it's been six years since I saw Bride of Chucky. I'm now, yeah, I'm now a 14-year-old. I'm living in Savannah, Georgia, which I had just moved that year. Mm-hmm. Um, starting to see like the website back when we used to have websites for movies. There was oh, a website yeah. for Seed of Chucky where it was just the womb and it would have like a Chucky face and it would change. It was an animation. I remember all that shit. The trailer, the little teasers that we got really was, you know, wetting the appetite. Could not wait for this movie. Well, yeah, to interject for a second, uh-huh. you brought it up. They left off. Uh, Bride of Chucky with that with the birth and you're like wait what what could this possibly be and that was mm-hmm. how it ended so it's just like oh six years of wondering what what, what the fuck a baby yeah. would look like and it was originally titled Son of Chucky and then they retitled it Seed for reasons we'll get into <laughs> um, but uh, so let's set the stage for the night that I saw Seed of Chucky one of the worst nights of my life mm-hmm. this is the time around the time when Grand Theft Auto San Andreas came out mm-hmm. 
it was a game that I had been basically begging my dad to help me buy for weeks. It had been out for like a month at this time, and I was still like the only kid on the block that hadn't already <laughs> played the shit out of it. So I was the I was the loser as a fourteen year old. <laughs> like you know, back when video games you're shit not mattered. cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you haven't even got to mission fifty, bro. What the fuck? Like, it, it's it's so yeah. So the, so the whole night was like set up. Like all right, we're gonna go. We're gonna finally. I had enough money, and my dad finally caved. They're like, all right, we're gonna go buy Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And then we're going to go see Seed of Chucky. This is mm. going to be awesome. We get to Best Buy. Sold out. <laughs> we go to Circuit City. Sold out. Ugh. Back when Circuit City was a thing. So that's mm. out. That half of the night is out. No pressure, Chucky. Go, uh, Save the day. <laughs> yeah. I, it was either on the way into town or while we were kind of going from store to store. It started raining like a bitch in Savannah, which happens a lot in this section of the country. So the weather was even terrible. It, it was like, yeah, it was like <laughs> Chucky was already doing his little chant, like the clouds <laughs> and shit were coming. And then we go to see seed of Chucky and you can imagine how that turned out. And not only that, to make matters worse, about a third of the way into the film out of absolutely nowhere, I started to get damn near deathly ill. Like it's like, it was a mix between a fever and a cold and a headache and, there, literally everything except for like somebody smacking me in the face happened. <laughs> so that was the night that I saw Seed of Chucky. And it, it, even if everything else went wrong, it was the night that I saw fucking Seed of Chucky. So mm. it still would have been at least 50% shit. Um, this movie is horrible. <laughs> I, 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 It's one of those things. It's not as bad as Freddy's Dead. People ask me that question all the time. What's worse, Freddy's Dead or Seed of Chucky? I would rather watch Seed of Chucky because at least Seed of Chucky has Chucky in it. And Chucky is basically the same as he always is in that one. He's not a fucking cartoon trying to be Chucky. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's that's the only small sliver of a redeeming Mm -hmm. quality I can give it is that at least Chucky is Chucky. Beyond that, what the fuck? happened like it, it's 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 the first movie that don mancini directs there's strike one <laughs> it's the first movie that he has basically complete creative control he has the script he has his own directing <laughs> it's basically do whatever you want don throw whatever you want at the screen and god does he throw everything at the screen mm. from mm. the very opening scene of the movie with the whole you know you're pissing your pants you're pissing your pants and just the way that the fucking glendall looks and you're like what is going on here yeah. and then so, yeah, they're so jarring for that to be the, the way they open the movie. It's just like, what the fuck? Am yeah, I in the right the, film? The style of it is yeah. so weird and jarring. Like it's just, it's, it's just, it's weird from the beginning. And then you get into the whole meta thing. It's actually in Hollywood. Mm. Jennifer Tilly's actually a character in the freaking movie that suddenly Tiffany idolizes, which is weird. You idolize somebody that magically looks identical to you. Yeah. Um, the whole plot line about having to get Chucky into Red Man. And, and I've said this before too, and this is not, this is not really a rapper thing. It's really just a musical artist in general thing. Whenever you stick a musical artist, which most of the time in horror tends to be a rapper, whenever you put a musical artist or a rapper in a movie, that's usually a seal of approval that your movie is not going to be very good. Mm-hmm. Because aside from maybe LL Cool J, there's not really a whole lot of horror movies that I know of where you throw in instead of getting somebody that can actually act, you just throw in a familiar face with a title that everybody knows. That usually means you don't have a lot of confidence in your film. Um, mm-hmm. and if there's an exception to that, I'm more than willing to, to admit that I'm wrong, but I think LL Cool J is the only one. Um, so you get that whole plot line and Tiffany's trying to get into Tiffany. You have all this really weird humor with like the, the dripping sperm from the, the, the turkey base there. There's doll tits. There's uh, the whole thing with the, the, the gender confusion of Glenn and Glenda, which is, I know we live in a time where that's a very touchy subject, but it's just executed very strange. Dude, that, that's uh, I have a couple of LGBTQ friends that that you know hold this this film in high regard, and I always say like, why, why? Just just because there's a a, a gender confused character doesn't mean doesn't. I mean, sure, I guess you're represented, but it's represented poorly in a, in a shit movie that like is kind of making a mockery of of the situation. I don't. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand. Granted, I don't I don't have thoughts like that. I, I don't know what it would be like to want to be uh, a girl or, or any of that stuff. So I, I, I am not speaking from a place of experience, but the movie's bad. The character's awful. I, I don't understand, like, why this is such a highly regarded character. 
Uh, I don't understand either for the exact same reasons that you said. I don't I don't have that perspective, but uh, it, it's it's yeah, it, most often when you hear people talk about this movie, that is the least favorite aspect. Mm-hmm. That is the like don't you dare bring Glenn and Glenda back. Like right. when they actually rumored that that short about hair this, picture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had the short hair picture and they, when it, before Colt came out everybody yeah. was like, "Oh, fuck." <laughs> and then even with the TV series when he had like dropped a little hint like, "Will we ever see Glenn and Glenda again?" He was like, "Oh, never say never." They were like, "No!" Like it's everybody <laughs> loses it about this character and and it's a hundred percent earned because it's just the most garbage execution of a character that I've seen in a horror film. Mm. Um, even the kills, like they up the gore quite a bit. Um, like when he cuts or when she cuts red man and his like intestines spill out, but it's mm. like, it's gore to like a comedic effect. It's so over the top and it just doesn't have the same bite to it that some of the other films have. Yeah. Um, yeah, the comedy's turned up a little too much. It's 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 yeah. it's camp at this stage. It's not it's not horror. It's it's camp with horror elements. And when you have John Waters in the movie, who's like the, the camp queen, I guess is the way I should call him. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Waters is infamous for his campiness, and he's like one of the sh- straight char- not not straight sexually, but you know he's. He's playing, you know, the straight role. A detective, role. yeah. Right. Or and something it's just like, like that, or, or, or a, a paparazzi or right, something. Right, right. Of all the things to do, if you're going to have a campy movie, why have John Waters be the the, the I mean, non-campy character? It's got a Britney Spears cameo, oh. for Christ's sake. I mean, and yes, I know it's not actually Britney Spears. I can't tell you how many fucking comments I got that said, bro, it's not even really Britney Spears. Does it matter? Dude. It's Britney like, Spears as a character is in a Chucky movie. Fuck you. It's it, and it's, it's worse than epic movie too. Like they, it's almost like and, and Mancini wrote this, right? Yes. Yeah, it's it's almost like he's, he's written like, all of them. Yeah, so it's like all right, I, I want to put this "Oops, I did it again" line in because because you know everything's popular and it dates today. it. Yeah, immediately. It, yeah, it's just like what the fuck? Why why have Chucky? Well, first of all, if Chucky's a, a doll who doesn't know shit about shit, why would he know that? Ah, fuck it, just. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're getting into logic issues. Let's not even approach that door. Be here oh, for wait, another hour. wait, let me let me get to the stats while I have the floor here. Um, Seed of Chucky released back to November, November twelfth, two thousand four. Twenty five million worldwide gross, second worst in the franchise. Only uh, Child's Play three was worse. Uh, two thousand four horror releases. This movie didn't even crack the top five for horror. Uh, the Village made one fourteen. The Grudge made one ten. Alien vs Predator made eighty. The Dawn of the Dead remake made 59, and this little thing that started everything else backwards, titled Saw, came in fifth with 55. The Rotten Tomato score was 33. And you're back. Seed of Chucky has a higher Rotten Tomato score than Child's Play 3. <laughs> Suck my white ass, Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Well, um, it's creative and different. I'm just so tired of the doll <laughs> killing people. Man. It's, it, it's woke. <laughs> it's, 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 dude, I don't, yeah, I don't know. There's not a whole lot else I can say about Seed of Chucky. I think pretty much you're in agreement. It's just it, there's not really anything nice to say about this film. Yeah. I mean, it, I've, I've yet to really hear somebody except for like the it's so bad that I can enjoy it argument, which whatever. Um, I, I've never heard anybody legitimately like try to argue. No, actually, the film is good at this and this. It's just misunderstood. Nah. I mean, there's a reason why, even as stubborn as Don Mancini is, he hasn't revisited the stuff from Seed of Chucky yet. So it's it's kind of. The, but, yeah. So the compliment that I'll always give this franchise. This is where the beginning of the end is, as far as continuity is concerned. You have so many different elements that are introduced at once in this movie, where it's just like, all right, so Jennifer Tilly is actually Jennifer Tilly in this, and it's like you said, they they open it with, you know, so wait, so is what you're saying is the movies are movies in this universe, but somehow. Jennifer Tilly needs to get that like like they it was just a strange thing the way they open it letting you know that okay this is a, a movie universe where the child's play franchise is also movies but why would Jennifer Tilly want to bring back to life a movie character it's not like there was a real Charles well, Ray and well no uh from what I understand the movies weren't movies but the events of the first four films 
were so popular that they created a movie out of it, and that's where you start with Seed. Is Seed is like oh, is that right? The meta, the meta chapter where they're like, okay, well, the shit that happened in the first four films was so iconic that we're gonna make a Chucky film, and they use the props, the Chucky and the Tiffany doll that they create for that oh. film as their vessels. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 dumb as fuck. It doesn't matter. Like it's no better or worse than what you were saying. But right, right. It's, it's so, that's how I understand like it. Like the the the. The voodoo aspect is gone. The the amulet aspect gone. Now you have no. It's the amulet's still there. It's on the neck of Glenn and Glenda. He, she has the little the chant on the back of it. He's like, oh, Dumbala, and they come to life. Oh, so what the fuck was with the jizz things, dude? I just watched this literally like a month ago, and I'm I'm dude, still it, like, you're trying to make sense out of shit that doesn't make sense. It's something with like a voodoo pregnancy. So like he fucking he beats off into the dam turkey baster so that they can impregnate her and they do a chant to make the shit like nine months overnight or some weird shit like it's oh yeah the accelerated pregnancy or some shit and she has yeah, that yeah. scene where she runs to the mirror and it's it's like a home alone thing it's just like what what yeah what, what is this movie what are you doing dude yeah i mean the movie opens with i think sperm dripping down is like the credits <laughs> yeah. i mean it's like from the very opening you're like what is happening yeah yeah, it's Jason X for a child's play. That's that's what. <laughs> oh, you, stop you have it. fun with it. So. Oh, stop right, it! So I'm trying to think of a really <laughs> shitty Friday the Thirteenth. So, so your experience to to kind of parallel this. I'm I'm I think just about ten years older than you. Sa- same time frame with me with Jason Goes to Hell. Uh, it would have oh. been my first Friday the Thirteenth movie I saw in the theater. Really fired up. Couldn't go the first night because it was sold out. Second night, uh, saw what ended up being Jason Goes to Hell as a Friday the Thirteenth fan. Not a good time. It's very funny. We have very similar experiences with our first cinematic uh, venture with our uh, highest ranked franchises. It's just funny that when you were saying that, I'm like, yeah, that sounds pretty close. (laughs) The stars are aligning. Did I do the stats for this? Let me just get. Okay. Uh, Hold on. Rotten Tomatoes. 33. 33. 33. Okay. Well, good. So that was Uh. 2004. And. And obviously, with it not even cracking the top five for horror, um, Universal said, well, you know, why don't we calm down for a little bit? <laughs> and it took yeah. nine years, nine years before um, Curse of Chuck. So I always get the two mixed up. 2013 was Curse then? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So, t- okay, Curse of Chucky. Again, setting the stage. I remember being really surprised when I heard this movie announced. I remember it, um, it was basically by the time I had heard about it, I wasn't quite into the horror sphere the way that I am now. So otherwise, I probably would have heard about it at every stage of production. Mm-hmm. But um, I just remember seeing an advertisement for a Curse of Chucky movie that was going to go straight to Netflix or straight to VOD, whatever it mm-hmm. happened at first. And I was like, what? And I was really curious about it. But then I read, still directed and written by Don Mancini. <laughs> and I went, oh, oh. <laughs> And so my expectations were like lower than dirt. I went out uh, the the box set that you described. I also own because I'm a whore. Mm-hmm. But the one before that that did not include Cult, I I bought, which had um, oh. Curse, which when is Curse more expensive out, right now, oddly enough. Yeah. Sorry. When Curse ahead. came out, they had a, a a box set come out in conjunction with it, just the same way they did the Chucky box mm-hmm. one. So I bought that box set. Um, before I had even seen Curse of Chucky, and back when I used to be a, a, a naughty boy and download movies, um, <laughs> I uh, you just I have downloaded... a very generous <laughs> uncle, is all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I um, I downloaded Curse of Chucky as soon as I could get a hold of it, and I watched it. And you know, it, it, partly because my expectations were so low, and partly because the film really does do a pretty good job at kind of recapturing some of the classic elements of the franchise. Mm. I ended up really liking Curse when I first watched it. Um, I really like the addition of. Go ahead. Was Curse the one that that leaked a couple of weeks before the actual release date? That was date? Cult. That was Cult. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. The uh, Curse. Yeah. So I really liked the addition of Fiona Dorf. That was the other thing I was really worried about because whenever you see like, you know, big person in the franchise hires their child who, mm. from what I understood, had never acted before, but maybe she had that I have never heard of before to star in the movie. I was like, oh, that is not a vote of confidence. But she's the best part of the movie, and she's the best part of Cult. Um, so I think that uh, I, I really liked Fiona Dorif. I liked kind of the the house setting. It was kind of like a Hitchcockian yeah. haunted house yeah. vibe going on. Um, yeah, it, I, it, it's, the, it's the polar opposite in tone to Seed. It, it's really yes. dark and, and like it, yes. it, it, literally it's just dark. A lot of the movie is just shadowy and shit. 
So. Yeah, and, and I really liked the the way that Don Mancini kind of crafted the story. I don't mm. think that his directing is still – I think he still has some directing issues. That's one of the issues that I have with the film. But it's much better than Seed. Um, so he was growing a little bit. But you get to the, the approach that he took with the story with this doll being delivered to a random family that you don't know why. It looked a little bit different. That's the other negative I have with the film is the the early design of Chucky, mm. which is part of the plot, right, which right. people kind of excuse it. But I still don't like the way he looks in the first – two thirds of the film. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, the the whole way he crafted the story with kind of going back to the mystery element of it, even mm-hmm. though we know Chucky's doing the shit like the, the dinner scene with the poison really good. Yep. Uh, whenever yep. You, you just see a hand with poison and everybody are like, who's going to get the poison? Um, the deaths and the kills are actually really good in the film where the guys like half decapitated, they pull it out and his head falls off. Um, mm-hmm. Especially, which is one of my favorite kills where uh, the, the bitch sister and he's like, you have your mother's eyes. <laughs> and they were always too fucking close together. And he stabs her right in the eye. Like, great one-liner and a great kill. But the whole plot element about when she goes and she peels off the thing and you realize this is actually still a part of continuity. Yeah. It's still after Seed, after Chucky. This is the scarred yeah. Chucky with makeup effects to kind of hide all that. All that was done really well. Um, I... Uh, I wasn't sure about bringing Alex Vincent back for the whole. It was a cool tease if it was going to end there, mm. but I was like, "Where is this going?" Because mm. the dude hasn't acted since he was like eight, mm. as far as I know. So I was like, "Oh, where is this heading?" Um, and Jennifer Tilly, even though she's got a real small part in the film, her acting quality is a step down again. Like I said, I, I love Jennifer Tilly and I love the character of Tiffany, but I really think that Bride is the only movie where she really is utilized her strengths. It's been a long time since Bound, I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so even today, I still think Curse is a really good child's play film. Mm-hmm. I think it, it's it's like my number four, maybe mm-hmm. five. I don't. Know. It, it's right below Child's Play three. So yeah, five. Um, I, I would still take Child's Play 3 over Curse, but it was a definitely, especially coming from Seed, it was a nice return to form. Right. And unfortunately, this is where the, you know, fool me once, fool me twice thing comes into play. It gained some confidence in me with Don Mancini. I'm like, okay, he's learned his lesson. He seems to be growing. This is going in an interesting direction. Let's see where Cult takes us, and mm-hmm. we'll get to it. But yeah. uh, that's kind of where I ended with Curse was like a place of hope. Yeah. Um, I'll give some stats, so let me have the floor for a second while I do this. Curse of Chucky, once again, released October 2013. That was released straight to VOD. Um, made $4 million domestic on video sales. Uh, 2013 horror releases in cinemas was The Conjuring with 137, Mama with 72, The Purge with 64, and The Evil Dead remake with 54. The Rotten Tomatoes score is 76, which is fresh. Um, something that I'll agree with you with a caveat. This is, this is absolutely the best child's play of the 2000s. That's, that's pretty easy for me to say. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Great, great, great. Two thirds, maybe four fifths, maybe nine tenths of the movie. Really great. But towards the end when it's Jennifer Tilly shipping out the boxes or whatever, like I was just like, oh, wait, why? You know what? Yeah. Fuck it. it. Most of it was great. I don't, I don't want to, I don't care why you're trying to shoehorn this shit in. Mm. It was fine. And I, I will say I missed this, too. I liked how they kind of even though it fucks with continuity a little bit, I mm. do like how they went back and showed flashbacks of Charles Lee Ray and kind of gave a little bit more to his character. Yeah. Yeah. It, there, there is this. Like I said, 90 percent of it, it everything. It, it was it was fine right up until you start explaining, you know, where, where you, you you plan on going with this thing. It, it, it mm-hmm. really was a return to form, getting things back to being grounded. There was there was a couple of jokes it wasn't it wasn't anywhere near hell even bride of chucky the bride that was pretty snarky uh mm-hmm. curse was a lot more reserved and and you know brought the tone back down which was great it's just the like if i have a gripe it's the ending's a little hmm i have this above three oddly enough because 90 percent of this movie i quite enjoy and 10 percent mm-hmm. at the end i'm like eh. whereas child's play three it's the other way around i really like the end but the first two thirds i'm like eh, mm. come on Come on. And uh, yeah. that's going to be it for the for the last positive thing we have to say for the Child's Play <laughs> franchise, I think. <laughs> Hopefully not after the remake comes out. But uh, yeah, yeah see, fingers yeah. and toes are crossed. If, if we have time, I, I'd like to discuss that because I think people are 
we have time. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so now we have, I'm guessing, what was it, 2017? 17. 17. Okay, so four years. So 2017, Cult of Chucky. And this movie had a lot of buzz, a lot of excitement about it because I think most people really liked Curse. Uh, most mm-hmm. Child's Play fans really liked Curse, and most horror fans were like, wow. And critics, too. Yeah, and critics, apparently. <laughs> More than the original Child's Play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Cult. <laughs> and and I, I'm already in the YouTube sphere at this point. Mm. I've started YouTube. I'm in Killer Flicks. Mm. So, like, I'm in the horror community. I've got my finger on the pulse. Um, there was a lot of excitement for this film. A lot by me, too. I actually did a whole review series of Child's Play leading up to the release of this. And I did a whole review series of Texas Chainsaw leading up to the release of Leatherface. Because they came out, like, within a week of each other. Um, huge anticipation for Cult. And I had very little... F- um, very little doubt that it was going to be great because the trailers looked really cool and interesting. It actually looked like a step up in production a bit mm. from the trailers. Um, I, following the trend, I was like, okay, Seed was a shitty one. Don Mancini got a little bit better with Curse. As long as we continue that upward trend, Cult should be really good. And like you said, it leaked early online. And I could not help myself. Mm. I was like, I am not waiting another two weeks. If it's online, I'm breaking the law mm-hmm. and I am buying it. Or I'm not buying it, I'm, I'm watching it. Mm-hmm. But I did buy it. Right. So like, mm-hmm. that was my way of justifying it. Yep. I was like, look, I downloaded it illegally, but I also paid for it. on. Mm-hmm. I, I watched it on Netflix to get them a view. And I also bought the box set before I, I dropped my spoiler just, review. Just so. testing it before I buy it. That's Yeah, all. exactly. <laughs> it's a rent to own. It's, it, it's lease, basically. But um, So yeah, so I downloaded the movie. And the movie opens, and I was like, this is going to be badass. Because mm. the opening scene with Andy coming home, you see the severed head of Chucky that he blew off and curse, and he's like all nailed to it. It's like Evil Dead looking. Yeah. He's torturing Chucky. And I'm like, that is awesome. Yep. This movie's going to be the shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Downward slope <laughs> from there. And look, I will say, like, I, I, the, the hospital setting is, is interesting. A lot of people compare it to Dream Warriors. I think that's just an easy comparison because it's 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 you psychiatric t- stuff. But it's it's it's, it's, it's Fiona Dorif. It's it's a tip of the cap to um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest because Brad Dorif is in One Flew Over yeah. the Cuckoo's Nest. They they meant they have two mentions yeah. of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in that movie, which I just think is so funny that people always say Dream Warriors. I'm like, no. Yeah, aside from the setting, on paper, it has nothing to. do in common with but uh, but yeah so you get you get you know fiona dorf i still think is really good in this film um even though i don't think her character is utilized as well but you get it it just it goes back to don mancini basically getting overconfident getting over weird and just throwing everything in the kitchen sink at the fucking wall and it was like he learned the wrong lessons from curse Mm. you know curse was successful both critically fan wise because you toned it back down you went back to what we loved about the franchise in the beginning, and it felt like he just took it as a vote of confidence. Like, oh, everybody loves me again. I can do my whatever I want again. <laughs> and, you know, this movie literally, it feels like 50-50. Like, it was when it was first released. It still feels that way. You either really like it, mm. or you really dislike it. There's not a whole lot in the middle, and it's pretty much half and half. Right. Um, and, and it's very, it's the only movie in the franchise that feels that way, where it is literally split. I've never seen the Child's Play fran- um, fan base split the way that it is with Cult. Um but just I mean, just just going down the line, the story direction of Chucky trying to get back at Fiona Dorif while she is in this uh, mental hospital. You also have Alex Vincent uh, doing his thing where he's trying to plan this ultimate, you know, scheme to finally end all of this and kind of save Fiona Dorif. Tiffany's out there doing her thing and the worst performance that mm. Jennifer Tilly gives this entire franchise by a country mile. Mm-hmm. Um, then you introduce this whole thing about multiple Chuckies, which on paper sounds interesting because it's something they were going to do with Child's Play 3, but they decided not to. Um, so it's always been an idea floating around in Don Mancini's head and it's something that could be utilized well, but it was not executed well in this film. Right. Um, and then you have like the, the humor is off. The kills are not quite as good as they were in Curse, but they're better than they were in, in Seed. Like they're, you get the one that's kind of cool where he throws the the propane tank or whatever, and it shoots, and um, or the, the gas tank, and it shoots, and it's kind of a retread of the the Bride of Chucky kill, but not nearly as good. Um, the drill kill, there's there's some gore in here, mm-hmm. but the big thing that turns me off about the movie is the not only the acting, but just the utilization of Andy. Like you brought him back and you made him a fucking moron because. 
this entire plan, and I haven't rewatched Colt in a while, so I'm going to be missing some details. But from what I remember, his entire plan throughout the film is idiotic, and all it does is get him trapped in a room. Like it's it's he sends a Chucky doll to the place, and or, or something along those lines, or he tries to find yeah. A there's doll that's, there's duplicate Chucky's, and he sent one of them, and it it, 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 it does get really convoluted and. and fucking stupid yeah and he empties like his whole clip or something like that into one doll and stomps his head in and, and it's not even the real chucky so it's, it's a lot of I'm, I'm skewing the details of i if you watch my spoiler review i go on a full rant about why it makes no sense but they make the prominent character aside from chucky in the child's play franchise an idiot mm. and they utilize him pretty poorly and his acting is not all that great either um and then the multiple chucky thing was the big thing that they just no fuck you because yeah. the way that they do the whole thing, it's just such a lazy ass script excuse to have these multiple Chuckies where suddenly Chucky found on voodoo for dummies dot com a little wink and call back to Bride for Chucky that there's mm-hmm. like a magnificently shortened version of this curse that somehow works a thousand times better than the curse that he's been utilizing for the past thirty years, where he says like three words and just transfers his soul and copies it to another doll. And I'm like you know, you introduce this plot element, mm. and I know you're kind of playing it for laughs, but this is a movie that's not really going for laughs, so it doesn't quite land that way. But that makes all the other movies seem like a gigantic waste of time. Because if Chucky can go into somebody's body mm. by saying three fucking words, then the entire struggle he went through in the first five films is idiotic. It's Well, it's not only that. It's the, fa- the, whole, the whole struggle for him for six of the movies, or maybe five is he's trying to get himself out of the doll into a human. And mm. they have him get, get into Fiona Dorif. So why fuck around being in dolls anymore? If, if, if you can get yourself out of a doll and into a human, that was the thing from, from fucking minute 10 of, of the first child's play. I need to get into a human body. All right, you did it. You're in Fiona Dorif's body. What are you making multiple little <laughs> side chuckies for I, I like it doesn't make sense it goes against everything like i said i i'm i'm a little foggy perhaps seed wasn't about that but most of the franchise chucky's goal is to get back into a human body and this one yeah. he, he just he can do it now and but he's still gonna be chucky like what it doesn't make yeah. any sense yeah and there's there's a lot of questions that the movie leaves you with too so it's like okay so is that like chucky prime like can he still kind of control the other chuckies <laughs> or is he just gonna have like <laughs> a hundred of him walking around at some point. Yeah. Then there's the whole thing about like Tiffany. It's like, okay, is this, what yeah. is Tiffany's angle in this? Right. And then you have the whole thing at the end where like, they keep teasing the, the, the little girl from curse possibly being murdered by Chucky or Tiffany. But at the same time, like they kind of leave a little wink, like maybe Tiffany just put her into a doll. Cause there's a Tiffany doll in the back seat laughing. Mm. And it's like, is that a copy of Tiffany or is that the little girl? And it's just, <laughs> it, it, there's so much by the end of this movie. You're like, what happened again? It's like you set yourself up perfectly with curse. Just yeah. follow through with that yeah. in a new setting. And it's just like, why? What are you doing? Man, you're seeing... putting all the weird, crazy, out of this world shit that we hated in Seed. And you're doing it again here. He, he directed the last three, right? He, di- he directed Seed, Curse, and Cult, right? And wrote them, yes. He wrote I, all of them and he directed the last three. I don't think I've ever seen somebody... Shit, not even uh, M. Night has this... this... <laughs> To, to put in his resume. I've never seen somebody fail so hard, course correct, and then go right back to failing. Like, it was like, like you had it, you fixed it. You had it so good, but you just totally went back to being a weirdo. Like, it, it's so strange, the journey from five to six to seven, where yeah. like, it just, it's, it's bizarre. Like, if you told me, oh, so-and-so directed this one, and then so-and-so directed that. And like, if you told me it was five different people, I'd be like, all right, that makes sense. But it's just, it's the same guy with with such biz- everything's so volatile about about the last th- last three, I guess maybe maybe the last four. But he didn't direct Bride. But it it is extremely strange how he it's like you said he's 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 been there from the beginning as a writer. So like you know you, you know the franchise more than anybody. Would it why why are you doing this this weird shit that he can he can get into a body like nothing now like that was the whole thing did, did did you forget do you not have notes do you not have the script at home to peruse through before you go again oh wait yeah. go ahead 
and it feels it feels like arrogance, which is why mm. I've I've had kind of some disdain for Don Mancini, and I say it I say this all the time. I've said it before in the videos I've done defending this remake, even before everybody kind of jumped on Camp Remake, which I was like one of four people when this thing mm-hmm. first was announced that actually liked this, regardless of what people say, because we had that we had that little. Uh, that what, poll on Killer Flicks is like, where, where did you start getting on board? It was like 70% since the yeah. beginning. I was like, bullshit. <laughs> yeah. But, but anyway, uh, so we had the whole, th- the, the, the Don Mancini thing, what I've always said, like, yes, the dude gave us the franchise. Mm. All of the best movies of this franchise, he has a, a hand in why they're so mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Nothing but respect for that. But just like George Lucas, yes, you gave Mm. us Star Wars, but you also gave us the prequels, so Mm. I will hold you accountable for the prequels. Mm. I will hold Don Mancini accountable for Seed and Cult. And it it really feels like arrogance when you even listen to interviews of the guy where he just flat out doesn't give a fuck if you like his movies or not. And it's Mm. like, dude, you have a really passionate fan base that has been with you since 88 that loves this character, that loves what you've done. What is this? It's my way or the highway shit. Like it, it's, it's. I respect it to a degree. At the same time, as a fan, I'm like, fuck off. Mm. And, and it's just, it to me, it's just, it. I've lost all faith in Mancini. I'm not gonna say that the dude won't ever do anything good again. This Child's Play TV series might come out and be awesome. Mm. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be because when you go to Sci-Fi Channel, it's again not a vote of confidence, but it could be awesome. But I was at the point when they announced the remake and they announced the TV show, I was going, I'm more willing to see what this remake can do than what Don Mancini can do yet again with a TV show. Um, And that's pretty much where I left with Cult, was I was right back in this similar situation I was with Seed, which was just like, all right, whatever. Mm. Let me me give some stats before you take back over. All right, so Cult of Chucky, released in October, October 3rd, 2017. Uh... Along, so it was straight to video. It is the lowest grossing film in the Child's Play franchise. Although, keep in mind, it was never released to theaters. Direct to video only made $2 million domestic. Um, 2017 had It making $327 million. Get Out making 176 Split making 138 And Annabelle Creation making 102 It was a big year for horror. And here's Chucky on home media. And the Rotten Tomato score is 77, making it the highest scored child's play movie. <laughs> and you're back, Cody. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've, I've had, uh, I'm drinking water, David. Um, I, I, <laughs> no, I've, I've, I haven't switched the vodka yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I've had this argument a lot in my reviews, especially when it came out. Like that was a lot. I was a big argument thrown at me. Well, people on Rotten Tomatoes loved it, so fuck off. You don't know what mm. you're talking about. Look at the critics who are reviewing this film. Like you're not going to see the Hollywood Reporter mm-hmm. and Variety and you know uh, Roger and Ebert and everything like that. Like I know Roger Ebert. That, or, the, the characters don't speak to me. Yes, I, 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 <laughs> all of the prominent critics that do most of the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes are not reviewing cult of chucky it's like fangoria and like you know like horror websites Mm -hmm. horror fanatics so there's a bit of a bias there for one Mm -hmm. but uh but yeah that that's whatever 71 percent. so uh i did i made up a thing which i've shown you before i'm just gonna go through this real quick the the full franchise rotten tomatoes so child's play the first one there's only three fresh in the franchise as far as critics are concerned child's play with 67 curse of chucky with 76 and cult of chucky with 77 there's (laughs) there's only one there's only one fresh in the franchise as far as the audience is concerned that's the original child's play with 63 child's play 2 47 Child's Play 3, 33. Bride of Chucky, 46. Seed of Chucky, 39. Curse of Chucky, 56. Cult of Chucky, 47. So, uh, you know, the audience, it's strange. The audience and critics are pretty close. You know, four-point difference in Child's Play, three-point difference in Part 2, four-point difference in Part 3, and they're even on Bride, and then everything goes tits up from there where it's just... 20 point 20 point separate like it's it's really strange how critics feel about these last two movies because the the audience score is pretty it's it's fascinating that there's only one child's play film that that is fresh for uh an audience because normally you're back by the way um Mm -hmm. normally 
an audience will will give a lot more credit to a horror movie because they you know they're not looking for you know the cinematography is this guy's arc any good like you know horror you're just going to see people get killed and gore and shit it's just strange to see so few even like i i expected child's play 2 to be fresh for for the audience yeah. or even bride for the audience um do you have anything to say to that because i have a a follow-up to that i i don't put any eggs in the baskets of those scores like i said mm-hmm. a lot of the older movies that existed long before rotten tomatoes did have mm-hmm. really really weird jacked up scores on both the audience scores and the critic scores and the audience scores on rotten tomatoes even for new films is absolutely useless like there's there's no verification well, I think now there is, but there used to be no verification on whether you actually saw the movie or not. Mm. You would have fake accounts like spamming negatives on like Captain Marvel and shit like that. <laughs> like it's it, it's and I don't know how many fans like of movies in the 80s go to Rotten Tomatoes to put their two cents in there. So it's just mm-hmm. to me, it's a number. It makes no difference whatsoever. If, if it was actually like if this was if we were really polled all of the horror fans it would align much more with what we're talking about. Child's Play 2 would probably be up in the 80s, right. the 90s. Right. Child's Play would be in the 80s and 90s. Child's Play, or Bride of Chucky would be somewhere around 60. Um, Curse would be somewhere around 60. Mm-hmm. Cult would be somewhere around 50. Child's Play 3 would be somewhere around 40. Mm-hmm. And Seed would be at like 15. Yeah. So uh, to take the floor back for a second, I, I checked because I, I was so fascinated with this. I checked six... Uh, franchises, critics and audience scores of Rotten Tomatoes. Halloween, only two critics uh, of the 11 films, only two are fresh. Audience, three are fresh. Uh, Friday the 13th, only one fresh of that 12, 12 movie franchise. It's the first one. It's the first one. And it's the same thing. Audience, one out of 12. Nightmare on Elm Street, three out of nine from the critics, three out of nine from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they can't hear you laughing, Cody. <laughs> Child's Play, three out of seven for critics, one out of seven for audience. Scream, three out of four for critics, one out of four for audience. And Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one out of seven both ways. Welcome back. It's, yeah. it's fascinating. It, it, it is. really is fascinating that audience scores aren't higher for anything. Well, you got to think, too, about how many of those actual reviews that people are posting in there are reviews of people that don't even like horror you know what i mean mm-hmm. like I, I would imagine if you sat down with somebody that doesn't even really care for horror and made them watch all seven texas yeah. chainsaw massacre films they'd mm-hmm. be like i kind of like one but you know <laughs> it's, it's you know what i mean so it's it's i get that but there's there's definitely a skew there yeah like, these are not accurate numbers you, whatsoever. you brought it up before too about the fact that uh rotten tomatoes you know most of these franchises existed before the internet let alone rotten tomatoes so the the only one that you could really kind of hold to the, the regard is scream and even that is kind of interesting that not yeah i mean Scream is pretty solid. The th- it is. Three is, you know, whatever, but <laughs> it's a pretty solid franchise otherwise. And for a worst film, Scream 3 is not <laughs> yeah, bad yeah, for a yeah. worst film. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it's, it's got some bad stuff in it, but it's got some good stuff in it, too. If that's if that's your, your bottom rung, mm. you're doing pretty good. Right, right. So, yeah. So, so with that said, uh, do you want to talk about the hype and or anything regarding this, this remake? Yes, let's <laughs> go into it. So, uh... I think it's been like almost two years, maybe a year and a half now. They first announced this um, this Child's Play remake. They said that basically it, it was a, a MGM was ha, has been holding on to their rights to make a remake to the original film since 1988. They could have made one any time between then and now, hmm. but they chose not to. Some people like to think that now they're just striking while the iron's hot, while Halloween is hit, and they're just it's a quick little bullshit movie they're throwing out to make some money, which I would argue. Um, that's smart and every single movie is out there to make money, but I don't think that it's bullshit because there's a lot of creative things they're doing with it, but we'll get into that. Yeah. But, um, it, it's MGM utilizing their right to remake the original film in a time where child's play could not be in a lower point. You know what I mean? Like I guess maybe seed was a lower point, but seed at least made money. Um, mm. child's play is now stuck in VOD land and it's not coming out anytime soon. Uh, without this remake, you know what I mean. Right. Uh, it, it, it's you have. Uh, I did refresh my memory. Did Curse make more money than Cult did online? 
Yes, Co- double. Okay. double. Yeah, yeah. So it was four million and then two million, right? Yep. So yeah. Yep. So the the last three films combined have been like what thirty million, something mm. like that. Yeah, like, weak. It, it, They've it, all been weak. And the the last three four years, like I listed off, it made three twenty seven. That's a bit of an anomaly, but horror is really strong lately. So for them to go straight VOD is one thing. Um, I kind of alluded to it before. Child's Play is mostly a October November release. For it to get a full bore summer, uh, early summer release, really says something about confidence. It, I, I don't know yeah. if you could say it's because of Mancini because it's out of his hands. But you know, MGM's like, fuck that. People want to see horror. Let's 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 give this a go. Yeah, and you know, it's it's from the beginning. I was like, okay, I'm I'm. I don't hate the news because all we knew was MGM is going to make a remake to the original film. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know if it was before or after, but it was shortly after that, that Don Mancini or shortly before that, that Don Mancini was talking about doing a TV series. Mm-hmm. And that had no confidence for me whatsoever. One, because Don Mancini and two, because TV series. Um, and I'm like, Why, how do you make a TV series out of Chucky? What the, he gets uh, a new I, body every week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's about all eight Chucky's. It's the whole season, but it, it's, it's, but yeah, so my my pop, I, I didn't warm up to it quite to the level I am now at first until they started releasing details of it, and they immediately followed that up with it's going to be an AI angle and not a voodoo angle, which mm. set the horror community mm. on fire. Mm. Everybody's like, bullshit! It's it's not even Chucky anymore. They should just release their own movie. They should just call it something else because it's not even Child's Play. And I was like, look, I know it might be weird at first when you don't see it in context, but. It's actually kind of an interesting angle to take because not only does it bring it modern, but it also opens up the door for a lot of things for Chucky to be able to do, which it looks like they're doing, like where he can control different things from this company. Mm -hmm. Um, It kind of takes away the whole tired story trope of I have to get into a body or I have to do some kind of voodoo chant. Now he just has to be rebuilt and you can have the AI there. And it speaks it speaks to a broader audience, too, because there's the you know, it's it's a commentary on stuff like Amazon, Alexa. You have all this stuff you could you can control your your lights from your car if you wanted to. It's it's you know, that that speaks to mainstream audiences, you know, commentary on what's going on in society. So, uh, you know, I, I remember a similar argument back when the Friday the 13th remake was announced and the first trailer came out. The similar, not not the same, but similar the uproar about Jason doesn't run. I fucking just really, <laughs> really. I love that shit. <laughs> oh, you've only seen Jason X then. Okay. Yeah. It's, it, it's, yeah. So, I mean, you had that whole thing with the, with the AI concept that, mm. that set a lot of people off, which people have seemed to be warming up to it more now, but that's, that was the main thing that everybody was like, Nope, Nope. Um, then you had, uh, then they just kind of released small details. Like they said that there was going to be at least part of the film where, Ch- um, Andy's going to have friends, which made everybody think they were just ripping off stranger mm. things. Cause apparently anything with more than one kid anymore is a stranger things yep. where you rip off, even though stranger things in and of itself is a rip off of like 90 things. Eat, eat your heart um, out. Stand by me, huh? Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> the Goonies. Goonies. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, the more details that came out about this film, every detail gave me more confidence. I was like, that sounds cool. That sounds interesting. That sounds like you're actually trying. You're not just, you could very easily make a child's play remake and make quite a bit of money with it. If you just looked at the original film and did the exact same thing in 2019. And we have seen so many remakes do that. The nightmare on Elm street remake. You know what I mean? They're they're, they're, some of the worst remakes are ones that just say wash, rinse, repeat, but it's going to be new. Hmm. And this mm. film, which is what I've said time and time again, if you're going to do a remake, at least make it wildly different. Do something creative with it. Make it have a point of existing other than just making money. And as much as people like to say it's just a cash grab, which all movies are cash grabs, especially mm. remakes, they're at least putting that creativity in here. They're doing something to make this wildly different than that 1988 film, um, from what we can tell. Yeah. And, you know, slowly over the year and a half, people like, you know, people started to kind of trickle into the pro remake camp. There's still quite a few detractors out there. It's but not 70 percent like like whoever. No, no. <laughs> whoever I was on a lonely <laughs> island with like five people when it came to this remake, when it first kind of was getting announced and up until the point when Mark Hamill was announced to be the voice mm-hmm. of Chucky. That was the big tipping point. That's when everybody went, yep, I'm on board. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a big announcement for them to make and i knew that they you know they were holding back the casting and I, i'm glad they went with a voice actor and not just an actor because nowadays you see a lot especially with animated films where 
nobody really cares about voice actors anymore, unfortunately. Like back in the day, you had all the the voice actors that did a lot of the cartoons, mm -hmm. Dom DeLuise and stuff like that. That it, it was like constantly doing stuff. And then nowadays, it's just you know Brad Pitt. You know, it, yeah. it's Hollywood actors, and you just recognize their voice. That's what people like nowadays. So, I I, was, I knew they were going to wait for a heavy name to announce to like you know drop the mic on everybody and i was really happy with that they not only got a big actor name but they also got a guy who was just as famous for his voice acting and and, and mark hamill isn't you know don't be fooled mark hamill is not like he's not a, a name he's not he's not he's not brad pitt he's he's a name to nerds and people who he's who, nerd you know, jesus right right so <laughs> yeah. like mainstream you know joe sixpack as far as joe sixpack is concerned child's play is just the name itself is is you know oh i remember that movie from the 80s that if if you recognize mark hamill as an actor in anything but star wars uh, i call bullshit but it's it's like you said he's he's nerd jesus whether it be star wars or the the, the voiceover work he's done for batman and or for, excuse me as the joker and you you got a little sneak peek of that and if there wasn't a better role for what you know of him, I, I, if shit, name it to me because this seems pretty, pretty perfect for his voice work. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it seems like I, I, there's been clips released that I'm not watching because I want to go in as blind as possible. Mm. I didn't even want to watch the second trailer, but you know, curiosity got the best of me. <laughs> uh, but it, it's the little bit that we've heard so far feels different enough. It feels Mark Hamill enough, but it also has hints of Brad Dorif in there and mm. it has you know it has a little bit of that flavor which I think is really cool because it's kind of like the perfect blend you know what I mean like yeah. you don't want to alienate the fans of Brad Dorif because that voice is so iconic like you know I've I've said this before I, I am totally 100% pro recasting Freddy I love Robert mm -hmm. Englund I bow at the fucking knees of Robert Englund mm -hmm. but at the same time I think you could easily recast that and make it just as good as Robert Englund possibly even better I don't quite say the same thing about Brad Dorif. Like Brad Dorif, the voice of Chucky is way harder to do mm. than it would be to cast somebody new as the character of Freddy Krueger. So it's a much, much harder shoe to fill, in my opinion. Um, but when they announced Mark Hamill, I went, perfect. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I hope that he knocks it out of the park. He's the one thing that I'm like, okay, he's he's the whole film is hinging on him. Because whether or not the film is scary, shot well, good cinematography, some cool kills, if Chucky sucks, the movie sucks. Mm -hmm. And so, it's good you say that because images have been slowly sprinkling and leaking out and people are freaked the fuck out. Because, that's the other thing. Yeah, that, that, that's the other thing that people are still kind of very either mixed or very negative on is the yeah. look of Chucky. Which, I'll be honest with you, that's the one thing that I'm not like really over the moon about is the look because mm -hmm. it looks different in every shot that we see which is kind of the the lesson you have to learn with as much information we get nowadays mm -hmm. is that things always look different with a still picture yeah. than they do when they're in motion yeah. there's been so many movies where i've seen a still picture and went Ugh, and yeah. then you see the movie and you're like oh that actually looks pretty good yeah. so um the the poster looks one way the still images look one way the trailer looks one way so it's 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 something that I'm like, okay, I'm not going to find out till I see the movie whether I, I like this design or not. Have you seen the screen grab of him with red eyes all pissed off? Yes, and I like that. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty traditional Chucky out of everything. Because it is it is true that a lot of the pictures that they've shown, he is kind of derp facey with a, with a big cheek or chin or whatever whatever mm -hmm. his feature is. That's a little exaggerated. But that one shot of him like. With I, first of all, I again, I'm not too married to the franchise, so perhaps this is not the right uh, opinion to have. But I like the fact that he has red eyes. Like me too. Like like, like uh, was it Robocop Terminator? Both no Terminator. Um, it reminds me of of you know, it, it, he's robotic. He's not. It, it, it's a, another step away from the whole voodoo thing. Let let it, mm -hmm. let it be. I'm I'm curious to see what other features the doll would have, considering it's a. AI or Wi-Fi or, or some shit like it's it's funny for as much as we complain about cult and and, and him taking control of, of different Chuckies you, you introduce this as as a new storyline you're starting fresh you're doing it all over again I'm a lot more willing to accept it for some reason like if if you tell me yeah Chucky through Wi-Fi controls other Chuckies and 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 they start doing things I'm actually a lot more welcoming to that idea just because of the 
electronics aspect of it. It's all in the execution right. and it's all in the logic. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, and it, like I said, I, I've said this before on previous streams, and I don't know if this is in the movie or not, but when I, whenever I, I started really thinking about the whole AI concept and they were starting to say Wi-Fi and it can control other mm -hmm. devices, I had this image in my head of that scene in Gremlins where Stripe walks up the street and then he turns around and he goes and he starts walking and there's like a hundred ah. gremlins that suddenly come up. And I kind of had that image with Chucky. Like they have the Chucky Prime, who's mm -hmm. like the old school one, the one that actually has evolved or somebody fucked with the AI, whatever they end up having, because we still don't know what exactly sets him off. Mm -hmm. And then you have all the drone good for nothing Chucky's that he basically just uses as cannon fodder. <laughs> um, so I don't know if that's going to be in the movie or not. But yeah, like you said, I, as much as I will bitch about the way they did it in Seed of Chuck or right. um, Cult of Chucky, I can say that, and I'm like, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. You know, so it's because yeah. it's, it's, it is fresh. It's, it's, like they're they're not saying here we're following six movies of of storyline where he has to find mm -hmm. Andy. It's it's something new. You know, you're not tacking on to the end of something that you've you've built for for decades. It's they're starting over and they're they're doing it from a different angle. Yeah, yeah, and and, and you know, it, it, it Tripper um, Getum says something that I agree with a lot in the chat too, which people tend to people that want to shit on the design of the new Chucky tend to overlook, and that Chucky has looked worse. Mm. You know, <laughs> I will take this Chucky over the first half of, or the first two thirds of Curse and some of the designs in Cult any day. The, the doll just started to look weird as the budget went down. Um, but yeah, I, the the first trailer totally sold me it looks like the tone they're going for is perfect going back to that old yeah. school horror the the pov shots of the arm grabbing stuff uh keeping chucky in the shadows um and i even like like the, again they haven't really like laid out the whole plot of this film that i know of but the hints that i'm getting is that the ai is screwing up in the fact that chucky is so programmed to be the best friend that it's going to be one of those things where he's so fixated on andy that everybody else is a threat mm-hmm and that's a really cool, different take versus just I want to get in this kid's body and kill everybody that gets in my way. Mm -hmm. So, again, like I said, you can have just on paper right now for what we know, it's got the spirit of Child's Play. It's got what you want from a Child's Play film, but it's totally different. And that is why you should do a remake to revisit what you love about it, but also do something that was either done poorly before that you think you can do better or do something wildly different that still holds on to the spirit of what we love. Yeah. So you kind of grazed over it. And I'll ask you as the child's play guy, how, how important is the look to you? It all uh, it's 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 not as important as the voice. Right. But it's important. So um, I, I think most people would Halloween fans would say Halloween four is one of the better ones. But the mask is is one of the and I will agree with that. Right. Right. So what I thought about and, and you mentioned it and I remember this was another thing of the day when they when they brightened that that image of Chucky in the shadows and they made mm -hmm. it seem like it was this big deal what if and and hinging on on the fact that he has red eyes what if most of the movie is just him backlit where all you see is the red eyes and and it's not about his face at all but it's you know it hit just a black figure with with red eyes coming at you i that kind of turns me on and dude four words nightmare on elm street <laughs> yeah there's a big difference between seeing Freddy fully lit, yeah. co totally animated in the last, what, three, four films mm -hmm. versus that first film where he's in the shadows, mm -hmm. he's behind things, he's silhouettes and everything. And that movie is more effective than those. Right. Right. So anybody that would argue what you just said and say that that's a bad approach is full of shit. <laughs> so I, I don't think they're going to totally do that. I think yeah. we're going to see Chucky a bit in the movie. But if they most if it's 80 percent of the film, if Chucky's in shadows and hidden and like in the background or you just hear his voice echoing and stuff like that, if they execute it well, yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Like I, I, the idea. Uh, listen, not, neither of us know one way or another, but if it does go that way, I, I would imagine with the red eyes. It, you'd have to capitalize on that and have him be shadowy with just eyes or like under a bed and you, all you see is the eyes and something like that. But mm. uh, I, again, I perhaps I'm the wrong person. I'm not, the look is not make or break for me. I'm, I'm kind of intrigued with the, with the story. I haven't been too, it's funny, the both trailers, I haven't been too enamored with it. Like I'm not excited or, you know, de depressed. I'm just like, doesn't look that good. But for some reason I'm really fired up about it because the marketing is so 
eh for me, it, which is kind of strange for me to say that because usually there's stuff that's that it looks incredible, but it's shit or it looks shit and it's incredible. This is just kind of eh. so it can go one way or another to me. And I, I think because everybody's making such a big deal, this reminds me of Friday the 13th, 2009. Everybody's making a big deal about the stupidest shit before the movie comes out. Um, yep. You like Friday 13, 2009, a hell of a lot more than I do. Uh, I went into 2009 with that, oh my God, it's going to suck, it's going to suck, it's going to suck. And man, did that opening 20 minutes with running Jason for as much as everybody hated <laughs> it. Yeah, that opening 20 minutes was fucking tits. So I, I, I'm kind of reveling in the fact that, that people are so, well, not you know not everybody, but, but 30%... <laughs> <laughs> are are not fired up about it. I'm kind of like, all right, you know, bring it on. Let, let's see, let's see what we got here. Yeah, and, and I've put myself in an interesting position because I've talked so much shit, <laughs> saying how great this movie is going to be, even before the trailers, even before Mark Hamill was cast and everything. That I'm in this position where this movie has to deliver so that I can talk more shit. <laughs> <laughs> or if it's horrible, I have to eat the biggest mm. amount of crow that I've mm. ever ate in my YouTube career. So mm. it's it, and I will be the first person too. If this movie sucks, guys, I will be the first person on YouTube bitching yep. and saying what the fuck. And you know, I, I will be the first person being honest. I'm not gonna have goggles about it. There might be some things that I like that you don't like, but I will be the first person to judge this thing on its own merits and be totally upfront about it. So yeah. if I am 100 percent wrong and this thing ends up being worse than Seed, which. <laughs> That's got a that's a big shoe to fill. But if it if it ends up being the bottom two of the franchise, I will be the first to tell you, and I'll be the first person crying in a bubble bath for the next week. I'm I'm looking at a at a message in the chat right now. Somebody said J- Pet Cemetery remake, yay or nay? And I, I just that that also reminded me why like I mm-hmm. I don't care because of the marketing. You know what? Pet Cemetery. I was excited at the idea, and man, did they kick the dog? Excuse the pun. They really just fucked that movie up. It's it's so uneventful i literally i don't even think it's out on blu-ray yet i don't care about that movie anymore it's it's so i really strange. don't either i really don't either it's one of those movies where i walked out with my grievances and things that i liked about mm-hmm. it but as time has gone on i'm like you know what i just don't like it <laughs> yeah yeah it's an ex-girlfriend it's just like yeah you're probably better off that we don't talk anymore <laughs> yeah exactly your old news sorry <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah so it, it's it's i'm very excited for it like this is this is my Halloween 2018. You know, everybody was freaking mm-hmm. out last year. And you were talking about the marketing. And aside from, I, I actually think the, the two trailers have been really good and mm-hmm. what they've shown and what they haven't shown. They haven't God, shown enough, right. Because right. I, I'm the person that's always bitching about trailers mm-hmm. showing too much. And that's why I was afraid to watch the trailers to a degree. But luckily, they've they've marketed it really well. But I love the other aspects of the marketing of this where they've they've slated it the same day as toy story 4 and they're going after each other too which is they are every every poster they release is him murdering one of the toys like a a variation of the toys and And pixar took took part in it too that they went the other way around did you see that that pixar did a similar thing where where they they were it's the same thing that chucky's been doing with with toy story but pixar did the same thing uh saying something like sorry chucky uh, or the real toys, like I'll have to find it. But there is one yeah. that Pixar did that kind of punching down. I was like, man, are you really worried about child's play on that week? Because oh yeah, shit. no, no, it's it's. And <laughs> I've had people actually say too that it was stupid for them to do that because Toy Story no. Four is going to make more money. But it's called counter programming, mm. people. That's not really the same audience. It's like there's plenty of us that's going to see both. Yeah. But at the same time, Toy Story Four is sold out. Fuck it, I'll go see Child's Play. And there's a lot of people that are going to go see Child's Play first who are horror fans. How many nine-year-olds are you going to have in that Child's Play movie? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so how it, many nine-year-olds are you going to have in Toy Story? A shit yeah. ton. It, it's, it, it's a perfect programming. I, I don't, I don't it, know why it, people it's, say that. What was it? Sisters that came out the same day as a Tarantino film or something like that. And they were like, that's going to bomb. And it made a shitload of money because everybody that doesn't want to see Tarantino okay. goes to see Tina Fey. Yep. So it's, it's, it's that mentality. So it's going to walk away. I've said before, this movie's whether it's good or bad, is going to make more money than the last three Child's Play combined. Oh. Easy. Well, Not that that's a big The feat, last but... two is six million. <laughs> it'll yeah. do that I mean, the, on Thursday, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it'll do that the first two hours. for the... <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's, it's going to succeed. And I hope it succeeds reception-wise because... And this is where I get into arguments with people. You can have this succeed and still have Don Mancini succeed mm-hmm. with whatever he's doing. This is the only horror franchise, again, which is very cool that you have the current running timeline still going when a remake is going on. They didn't chop it off. They didn't cancel it. They didn't retcon it. They didn't do Halloween 2018 and say, this takes place after Child's Play 2. The rest of it doesn't fucking matter. They are letting Universal do their own thing. 
staying out of their lane and they're doing their own thing and they're making it different enough where it doesn't it's not going to feel like they're stepping on each other's toes right and to me that's another reason why I've never understood this bitching about Don Mancini. It's not like Don Mancini is going to be out of a fucking job. Mm. If he's out of a job, it's because his TV show is terrible and nobody wants to hire him anymore. And there's a reason why the dude hasn't done anything but child's play his whole career. I'll say that. But if the TV show ends up being great and the remake ends up being great, that's just more awesome Chucky shit. So yeah. there's literally absolutely zero reason to root against this remake even if you're against remakes even if you think the trailer's not good there's no reason to root against it because there's also this if this movie makes a ton of money especially for a child's play film i guarantee you universal is going to be tapping on the shoulder of don mancini saying hey we got some extra budget that movie made a ton of money you want to throw one in theaters in a couple years yeah Tell me that won't happen. Well, yeah, the oh, shit. When when Lee and I first started doing YouTube, our, our big thing was we need more horror. Um, would you rather have too much Chucky or none? Like, yeah. it's it's such an if you're a horror fan, it's such an e easy debate. I would think. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take more. Let let me choose between what I want and what yeah. I prefer rather than can I get a fucking horror movie, please? I I'd, mm -hmm. I'd rather it. Shit, give me too much. I don't have yeah. to watch it. <laughs> exactly. Yes, please. Yeah, it's it's like Pet Cemetery. Uh, all right, thanks. Y you made a good try. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <All flat. laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's 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 coming out here that the twenty first. So just a couple of weeks. Um, I'm gonna be seeing it if I get my way very very late Wednesday, the way that I did Halloween twenty eighteen. Right, so um, I'll be and I'm gonna have train down on Tuesday then. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to have my review up very early Thursday. Um, so it's it's it, that's my my plan at the moment is to see it Wednesday night and have my review up right around the time when everybody's getting ready to see it on Thursday. So I, I have big hopes. It's my most anticipated movie of the year. It has the most potential to disappoint me. Mm. Um, trying to temper my expectations. I'm trying not to you know. There's a lot of channels out there that are doing a lot of um, deep diving into stuff and doing a lot of speculation and everything like that. I'm staying away from all of that. Um, not watching the clips and the little behind the scenes stuff that they're showing. Uh, also the score. I haven't seen like the full score release. Somebody mentioned it, said they finally did release it, but they had a little teaser with um, the guy that does the score for walking dead and a couple other things. And this new Chucky score is pretty awesome. Like it's very creepy and it has the toy quality to the, the, the tune of it. Yeah. And that's one thing I've said too. the child's play. That, that's the one thing that's always been missing. is like a signature score. Yeah. Nightmares got it. Friday the 13th got it. Halloween's got it. Chucky has never had like a score that's gone throughout the films. Yeah, a, a key note. I mean, uh, yeah. the the one thing, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street's got the one, two, Freddy's coming for you, Fire the 13th has the, ch 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 mm -hmm. which which people know more than the music. And obviously Halloween, people know the score. Rewatching the, because I think you brought this up before I re, re sat through all seven. I was like, all right, I'm going to make a conscious effort to try to notice the score. And even if you're looking for it, it, it you know, there's not much about it. I mean, there is that, that doofy, I think in the second one they have that that what is that a xylophone they have a bit mm -hmm. of that in, yeah like in, in an eerie fashion so yeah we, we could use a a musical th cue to associate with child's play mm -hmm. bear mccreary thank you so much cthulhu cult that's the guy's name so yeah he's done a lot of scores and they released a little tease and that really that was another thing i was like again something else that's great that the other films have not really dove into much. So it's... Is Bam McCree the same guy from, from Mandy? Because that was a really good score. Uh, um, I'm not sure. I can fact check that real quick. Mm. Go ahead and keep the... I'll, I'll, I'll... So somebody said your volume was too loud. Thank God we got that now, an hour and a half later. Uh, <laughs> I, th I think I fixed it. I think. Um, I would want more Chucky. You two guys are actually getting me pumped for the movie. Dude, I, I've been... Uh, it's and again I'll, I'll i'll thank pet cemetery for this because pet cemetery was such a failure i've lowered my expectations and it's actually kind of made me kind of excited because i was pumped up for pet cemetery and i was like you know what walking out oh, that was that was really that was really not good that was really disappointing so it's tempered my expectations for child's play but at the same time i'm like all right so with my lowered expectations even if it's okay i'll be pleased mm -hmm. And no, Mandy, by the way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. Pet Cemetery was my number two most anticipated mm. of the year. And yeah, that, that movie 
did not deliver what I wanted. I'll just say that. So this one, and you can't, I, you can't even put it on the on the the trailer, the spoiler. Like, yeah, you know, I I know people. That's one thing, but the movie's soft. Otherwise. Yeah, I mean, I, I would have I would have walked away a little bit more pleased with it yeah. if I not had not known that just for the shock value alone. Right. But yeah, it, it's it's everything that the movie built upon that twist to do in the third act. That's most of the problem. So it would have been the same issue. But yeah, um, not a whole lot more I could say about the remake other than I'm just really excited. I've been on board from the beginning. There is video documented proof of that. So if you think I'm full of shit, go ahead and go back on my channel. From the beginning, I was the one saying that this remake has got potential. So I hope to God they deliver on that potential. They've got they, – they, the sky's the limit if this movie, you know, if it succeeds. I think that that, that really brings Child's Play back into the forefront. Um and that just gives them carte blanche to do whatever they want with the franchise with how they've set up the character and the rules and everything new with this. And then we got the Don Mancini thing over on the side, too. So hopefully that's good as well. So it's a, is there it's a, a good. Is there a date for that TV series? Next there, year. Oh, vague. That, I, that, next that year. I know. Of, yeah, that I know of. I thought it was fast tracked, but apparently it's slow tracked. I so bet I you I bet you they're waiting to see what this does before they do anything. And you know what's funny? As much as they act like this remake's out to get them, I guarantee you they're doing that. I guarantee yeah. they're waiting. They're going, you know what? If this succeeds, we might have a chance to go do something else, which yeah. is what I told people in the last video I yeah. did, which is like, dude, if it succeeds, it's just more Chucky. So quit the bitching. And Jennifer um, Tilly with her fucking tweeting yeah, not, publicly. Not my Chucky. Yeah. All right. Go play <laughs> poker, huh? Relax. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cute and liar liar. <laughs> that was <just> right. <laughs> Yeah. The mid nineties um, is the last time I was like, mm, "Hey there." Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, so, do you have any more thoughts on the remake? Any what's what your like your main worry for the film? Like, what's the one thing if they do, it's going to pretty much be like that's over. I don't know. I think if, like I said, I, I'm I'm kind of neutral. Uh, like Halloween, I was just kind of all right. Give it to me, and I was okay with Halloween 2018, if if not a slightly pleased this mm-hmm. i like where they're going with it i'm i'm curious to see like with the wi-fi idea the, the whole bluetooth whatever if if they have him like really capitalizing and some you know what the one thing i want to see is some fucked up digi deaths like you know have have some garage automated garage door crush somebody or you know how i'm trying to think of all the things you could do that microwave somebody's hand or, like what is well, controlled got- by electronics like They've got a shot in the trailer where a guy is holding on to a pipe that's getting hotter and he's above a buzz saw. So there's going to be some gnarly <laughs> shit in this film. Yeah. And not only that. Whoa. Oh, hey there. I hope it wasn't a. Um, <laughs> yeah, Chucky fell. That's what that was. I hope it fell. wasn't. Yeah. I hope it wasn't a, um, a spoiler or anything like that. But there's a poster, that, like a, a drawn poster that just came out where Chucky's walking through a factory holding somebody's face like he's cut the face off so like that's awesome yeah so I, i'm hoping that too like th- this movie needs to have some gnarly ass kills like don't hold back on that so that's um it. american godfly in the super chat five dollars thank you thanks for the dope content no problem thank you so much for the super chat we'll keep the dope content coming <laughs> yeah. um, so so did you say what what can make or break it for you it's gonna be the the, the portrayal of chucky it, it, that's basically what it comes down to. If there's great kills, if Andy's awesome, if the score is good, if the tone is good and the directing is nice and the cinematography is great, if Chucky is bad, then the movie is going to really? be rough. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's going to be better than some of the other Chucky movies still with those aspects intact. But mm-hmm. if Chucky is a failure, then it, it goes back to like um, – and I'm not nearly as hard on this as most people, but it goes back to like the Nightmare on Elm Street thing. If you fuck up Freddy, then you mm. fucked up your movie. You know, and I don't think it was the performance of Freddy more more than the the utilization of the character. But if they fuck up Chucky, then you're not going to have Child's Play fans in your camp anymore. They're going to say, "See, you fucked it up." Yeah, it, it, yeah. I think the fact that that I'm give or take with Child's Play, it's it's hard for me to understand. I'm I'm trying to put a parallel to the Friday the Thirteenth franchise, and I guess Jason goes to hell. You know, that's not Jason. It's just a bunch of different dudes like. Like there are fans of Jason Goes to Hell. Me, I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, okay, yeah. for you it is. <laughs> Trust me, I get it. It's like yeah, you yeah. want to say Freddy's that is fun. I'm like, yeah. fuck you. Yeah, no, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> yep. So, um, huge anticipation. 
Yeah. Really hope that I don't have to be the guy saying <laughs> like, yeah. it's going to be a tough review. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not letting my anticipation get nearly as high as it was for like Halloween because like Halloween. I, I mean, I would have had my issues with that movie regardless, but that was like a big thing. Everybody was freaking out about it. We were having to do videos left and right. We were talking about it every screen stream. Mm. Killer Flicks was basically Halloween town. Not that it's still not. But yeah, it's, it, we better have it, at least one episode Chucky based after <laughs> at least after this. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, it was. It, I'm I'm tempering my expectations as best as mm. I can for as excited as I am because this is. I have a I have a really good confidence that this is going to be one of those remakes that we talk about when it's like, what was a great remake? We go that Child's Play one was pretty fucking good. So um, that would be awesome. That's a. I welcome that idea. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. So in in in, in a time like you said, where where horror is back on the upswing yeah. and slashers are back on the upswing. Mm. I don't want anybody dropping the ball. There's no reason to nowadays. You have 30 years of lessons to learn. You have nothing but reasons to make a successful film. So as long as your head's in the right spot, which it seems like it is, sky's the limit. Yeah, so. and you know what, guys? If if you're a, a fan of horror, if you're a fan of slashers, and, and you want to see stuff like this succeed, pay for the fucking movie. Go watch the movie at the movie theater. I, I can't stress that enough. As somebody who, who delves from my uncle every now and again uh if if you want to see stuff like this succeed you have to you, you got to put money into it because if if it doesn't make money they don't they don't make more yeah that's all they see that's right. all they see is the dollar sign do people right. like it do people don't like it right. it doesn't matter you, you could have you know if if they're expecting 40 million and only 20 million comes out of it it doesn't matter if all 20 million is right. thumbs up they don't yeah. care the nun is absolute dog shit it made a ton of money as far as the the studios are concerned so they're making another one Yep. So that's it. Just just support with that wallet of yours. It's, it's, as I, as much as I know that that sucks for some people, you, you gotta you gotta do it. Go go pay for it. Don't don't torrent that shit. Absolutely. So I guess as a we can do I don't know maybe fifteen twenty minutes just kind of bullshitting with the chat if you want. I don't know okay. if you got anywhere to go, but um. <laughs> <laughs> But we got we got that. So if you guys want to throw some questions out, try to keep them mostly child's play and Chucky related. I mm. don't want like full blown kind of Q and A going on with a bunch of different topics. But um, one thing that I'll throw at you while they're kind of getting their questions ready is um, if child's play succeeds. So that would be Halloween succeeding and then child's play succeeding. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay, there it's you got go. it's got to be right. It's got to be Nightmare on Elm Street because Friday, be. Friday the Thirteenth. We just heard they're they're even worse right now than than they were. Dude, like, how, how do you not look at the state of horror right now and be like, you know what? Fuck this bullshit. Handshake agreement. We're both going to make money. Let's get a movie out there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, guys, figure it the fuck out. Like, you're you're literally losing money. You're fighting over the percentages on shit that you uh, is, is in the past. You could you could pump out something. Shit. Go go call Vince DeSanti. Give him a million dollars and watch what he does with that. And then count the fucking pennies as they roll in because... Even if you split it three ways, you're still going to do just, oh, it's just so frustrating. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, I'm right there with you. Nightmare has got to be, be. It's got to be around be. the corner. There's got to be conversations going on right now. There has to be. Yeah, especially because uh, it's Warner, and Warner is fucked up with, with the Friday the 13th thing. So, yeah, y- y- there's your, oh, no, wait, you know what? Warner's also conjuring, so maybe that's why they're not in a big rush. I mean, they don't. They're, they're not. They're, they're printing money right now with that yeah. franchise, so yeah. they're not in a hurry. But as far as like striking while the iron's hot, like yeah. Freddy's the next one to come. Dude, it's either years. that or Scream, and Scream is probably would be more difficult to do without Wes Craven than mm-hmm. to have a new um, uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street because it's it's. I don't know. They're both the same Wes Craven thing, but he did all four of them. So. Well, even that would they have the TV series, the MTV series for that, and that's kind of been. Yeah, yeah that's that's hanging on by a thread too. Yeah. Hello, Beth. A little bit. Hi, Beth. Um, yeah, that that was something where they announced it for season three was going to be a total reboot, and they said that Queen Latifah was going to be taken over, yeah. and now I guess it's it might not even happen, it's dangling by a thread. Mm. Um, what the hell happened to the whole thing about uh, LeBron James doing a Friday the Thirteenth? He was interested, as was Jason Blum, but but they're okay, I'm they're interested. tied up. Yeah. They're tied. Up. Yeah, yeah, I'm interested too. But what the, what the fuck does yeah, that yeah. mean? Uh, Jason Blum and fucking yeah. and, and Jamie Lee Curtis just having discussions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah the 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 rights there's a rights issue between the the screenwriter uh victor miller of the first one and sean cunningham yes. the guy who started friday the 13th and and has been responsible for the successive uh 
uh, uh, sequels. And the argument is that the Jason that we know and love is from two through, you know, t today. And mm -hmm. Victor Miller saying, well, I, I created the character, so I'm owed the money, f you know, one through 12. And it's just like, dude, just, just yeah, settle this. Just settle this. Yeah, you wrote the character. What, what, so what? <laughs> you mentioned his name. Thank you. you know, good job. Good <laughs> yeah. job, bro. Yeah. It's it's uh, it, it, it shouldn't be this difficult. But I don't no. I, we, we don't know what's going on. But you would think common sense would t would tell you, guys, that you're, you're losing. You're lo leaving money on the table right now. Figure it out. Yep. Absolutely agree. Uh, we have a super chat from Sal Screen. Hi, Cody. Love all the great vids. Keep it up. Thank you so much. Uh, and we have a slew of questions coming in. Did Ooh. you see the news about Never Hike Alone? Um, mm -hmm. Which news? Uh, yeah, there's been a, quite a bit of news, so I'm not sure specifically. But I don't know everything how much I've is heard. Public. Yeah, all, 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 yeah, exactly. We're, mm. We kind of have behind the scenes discussions with Vince, so I don't want to say anything that he mm. hasn't already said. But I would just say everything that I know about Never Hike Alone as a f mm. movie and as a potential franchise, whatever you want to say, I'm all on board for it. I have nothing but confidence in the right. guy. Right, dude. That's why I, I I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. If if they get the rights back, whatever. If if there's a Friday the Thirteenth to be made, he, he's the guy you call. He he's proven with mm -hmm. with no money. He's proven. <clears throat> Give it to him. He's respecting the franchise anyway. Let yes. him roll. Holy shit. And then and then cast me as one of the victims. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> I'll be in the same car. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Double decapitation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want the plot to stray from the original or extremely close, almost shot for shot for this movie? I've already pretty much answered that question. I think that second option you presented is the worst way to do a remake. Yeah, Gus Van Sant, Psycho. How do you feel about that? Because that's yeah. a shot for shot remake. Exactly. Yeah. There's absolutely zero point to do that. Mm -hmm. Unless the original film was terrible and you're going to do it again but do it better, mm -hmm. there's no reason whatsoever to take a beloved movie and do it exactly the same again. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. immediately you're, you're, you're a lesser film. Texas Saints so Massacre. Uh, re, re, I, I, I think the remake's better. And it, I agree. It deviated a bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, Charles looks very good. It's a Chucky fan film being made. Looks good. Yeah, I haven't watched the trailer for it. I've seen some stills. I'm kind of curious, but I don't... There's there's so many fan films that have kind of come out of the woodwork since Never Hike Alone kind of paved the way for them that I, I, I don't put too many eggs in those baskets until I actually watch right. them. Right. I, 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 there's, there's like three or four Jason ones in production. There's a Chucky one. There's been a Freddy, the Freddy one, like a mini series or some shit going on. So it's, there's also a gremlins one that just got put up or something. And I saw a still from it. I'm like, what they have money in that because they had like a, like an albino looking uh, gizmo and it looked pretty legit. So I'm like, yeah, what's going on here? It's, it's strange. It never hike alone is a really, really good fan film. That is, it, guys, I don't, I don't want to be the shithead, but a lot of fan films are fan films. They're, they're, they're not great. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not all never. Right, right. That, that is a, that, that is a diamond in the rough. There, it, it just, uh, it just, just feels like every time somebody puts out a fan film, people are rushing to be like, all right, it's a fan film. Let's see it. It's, and it's, <laughs> they're, they're not all, they're all, not all that great. Sometimes yeah. they're kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, no, you're good. <laughs> Horror Master, Freddy versus Chucky. Your thoughts? Hmm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I've said it before. Scream. Unless it's a yeah, <laughs> unless it's a Freddy versus Jason two, and we get Robert Englund back, I really have no interest in any versus movies because mm. it just that was the only one that even kind of made sense. And there's a lot of people that don't even like that one. I think it was great, especially for what it could have been. Oh yeah. But. Yeah. It was like you said, Ronnie, you fun that, 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 if it's fun, that's all you can really ask. I'm happy. Good time. Great. Thanks. But you look through some of those abandoned, I think there's like 12 or 13 abandoned scripts. And it's just like, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do that? So if mm. a studio is behind it, best of luck because they yeah. don't know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> yeah, and Freddy versus Chucky is just too weird of a of a thing. So I don't know. Yeah, I, you're more likely like Chucky versus Puppet Master, or like put Leprechaun put, or some yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Small people. Yeah, it it doesn't make sense. Yeah, not for that at all. Um, the new Child's Play theme. Oh shit! I just scrolled. <laughs> I hate when I scroll and it scrolls like a fucking full page. <laughs> yeah. Um, where the hell did it go? Oh, it went all the way down to the bottom. Great. Um. 
Oh, wait. So while you're looking... The some... new Child's Play theme sounds like the Child's Play 1988 theme and the end credits theme. Interesting. Oh. Um, for, so what I heard in that tease, maybe that's not the score, but whatever he was playing around with sounded pretty badass. Um, so, speaking of Annabelle, isn't that movie also being released along with Child's Play and Toy Story? It's not too far away from it. I think it's next yeah, you got Annabelle, then you got that, and then I don't, I don't, I think The Boy 2 is right around the corner. Ugh. So there's like three doll movies, which I... Uh. Um, somebody asked a long time ago what compendium means, and it's just a, a complete collection. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Answering a question from 20 minutes ago. Yep. Um, so yeah, Annabelle, I, I'm curious about it, especially since it looks kind of like Conjuring 3 kind of. Um, I actually liked Annabelle Creation quite a bit, and I don't think the first Annabelle is nearly as bad as people say it is, although it's still not great. Um, and The Boy 2, I could care less because I hated The Boy. Mm. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with, with the three doll movies. Um, I will give this one exclusively to you because I, I refused to answer it earlier. Uh, best Chucky Kill. Uh, it's Bride of Chucky, the the, the mirror. The, the, the wine the bottle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tiffany, yeah, that that's a great one. That's definitely in my top five for sure. I, I think, um, and it's just uh, Diego. In case you weren't watching earlier, the reason I wouldn't answer the question is because I uh, I had a super chat asked the same question. I have a Chucky kill ranking that I have. Uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm whoring out the week after the remake comes out. So that's a video I'm gonna have. I didn't want to spoil the the number one of the video. So that's um I I threw out the the wine bottle one as is one of them and the um the the teacher. Uh, yardstick kill from Child's Play 2 is, is two that I hold in high regard. That's Cody for smash that bell and find out in a little bit. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Stay tuned. <Don> Cody. <laughs> what will be the best scene in the remake? I can't wait to see that Toy Store scene and the factory scene with his mom hanging. Can't wait to see that. Yeah, mm. I mean, all the scenes that I've seen in the trailers look pretty awesome. I like the, the Christmas, like there's Christmas lights in one of the shots in the trailer mm. that um, we you know it's it, granted it, it it to to the to the franchise's credit it's followed this this timeline really well and it's been rather continuous but you know a toy and there's no Christmas aspect to it you would think you know toys you know somebody gets it for Christmas I'm thinking perhaps that Andy gets it for Christmas in this new one because he got it for his birthday or. Yeah, he he wanted it for his birthday and got clothes, mm-hmm. uh, or the or the ha- the clothes and the hammer or something. And yeah, it was it was all the accessories yeah. without the doll. I was like, this mom's a bitch, man. He got yeah, him, yeah. got him toys in that got, big box clothes. too. Like motherfucker, yeah. he knows what that box looks it like. It was like uh, <laughs> when I was a kid once. Uh, I really wanted the first PlayStation. That was like my big thing that I wanted mm-hmm. that Christmas. And what we'd always do is Christmas Eve, we would all like my me and my dad and my my siblings. And my uncle and his family would all go to my grandma's house and it would be like, you know, at grandma's was Christmas Eve and we would get the majority of our gifts because, mm. you know, she would just splurge. Mm. And then the next day, Christmas Day was whatever we would my dad would buy us. So Christmas Eve, I got a PlayStation game and I got a PlayStation controller. Uh-huh. And I was like, I don't even have the systems yet. And then she was like, well, it's because my cousin had it. She was like, it's for when you go to your cousin's house, you have something to play. And I was like, this is bullshit. Like, you know, right. I was like, this sucks. <laughs> and then the next day I got the PlayStation from my dad. So it, it, it worked out. But that, that, that's kind of what I think about when I see that. It's like, he got clothes and he got all the accessories. Yeah, the, the fucked up thing was the box was the same size for clothes. <laughs> That's trolling right there. Yeah, Come on, like, man. You wrap clothes in paper, so it's obvious it's clothes. Yeah, yeah. So you open that shit first. Not fucking the big things box. the size of a lawnmower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> London Black. I did not actually watch the sneak peek. Um, I'm trying to stay away from all the clips that they're mm-hmm. releasing right now. Uh, let's see here. Answer my question. Scroll up. Best Chucky ending, climax ending. Um, to me, it's Child's Play three. As far as like the child, like the the death of Chucky, that's the coolest like climax. As far as that, as far as like third act, two, two easy, two. I, I I'll say two for both. That that I, I mean I, I I might watch that again before two weeks from uh, before the, the new one because I like watching it again a couple weeks ago. I'm like, man, I I don't remember it being this strong, but that that third act was really fun. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Let me scroll here. Would you guys have cast Aubrey Plaza as the mom, or do you feel she comes off too young? 
no, she's she's in her thirties. I like that aspect too, the kind of young single mom. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I, I haven't seen a whole lot of Aubrey Plaza, but from what I see from the trailer, she seems fine. Yeah. Uh, are you nervous that Chucky will be re- revealed late in the movie like the first one? Um, as far as like his evil side? No, I'm not worried about that at all. I'm actually, I, I'm for that. Um, mm. I'm for the first act being, you know, Chucky's doing his thing and then something in the second act sets him off and. Right. It, it that would be fine with me right because it is a you're restarting you get to you know the, the thing about franchises is you you're not allowed to to do the tension thing because we already know who the bad guy is we know everything like we're just picking up where we left off with this you get to restart and redraw it out and you you could go maybe the first 30 minutes 40 minutes without even chucky and some people may not like that but I mean, you don't get that very much in a franchise because you've already, like, like I said, you've already seen the bad guy and what he can do. So, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to draw it out and get tension where here's another chance to have that. And, and why not exploit it? Yep. Yep. Exactly. I'm right there with you. Uh, I had a couple people ask if I've heard the new theme. I have not yet. Uh, I'll probably check it out once we log off of here, but all I've heard is the little tease they had when they announced that, uh, Bear McCreary was doing the score. Um, CP and Cody, would you guys have cat? Oh, you already read that one. Yeah. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Your thoughts again. <laughs> uh, thoughts on the new Child's Play posters with Chucky killing Woody and Buzz Lightyear. I love the the marketing with the Toy Story. I think it's been awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. I have a friend of mine that doesn't like it at all. He thinks it's distasteful, and he's kind of what? He's he's very. Him and I. Please don't tell me it's like Durbin or Sean. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. It's, okay. it's a buddy of mine that, um, yeah, he's, he doesn't have a YouTube channel or anything. He's, okay. he's, I think he went to film school. He, he's very like classic film, like foreign film. Like he's, mm. he's very, Snobby. you know, old school. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, I didn't. Um, he's a good friend though. So yeah, even sure. with that said, I love the dude to death. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he, he, he was the only one that I've seen where he's just like, this, this is ridiculous. Like <laughs> everybody else I've seen is loving it. So yeah, it yeah, seems d- to be. It's it's and it's not the first time they've done this with this franchise. Behind the chat in the good guy doll, I have the thing, and I, I remember it in the newspaper where he was he was the scissors on the Jack in the Box, and it said, "Sorry, Jack, Chucky's back." Like Jack in the Box is, you know, at, when this movie came out twenty five thirty years ago, Jack in the Box was a childhood staple for a lot of people who yeah. were in their thirties at that point. So he disrespected a Jack in the Box too. So like, mm-hmm. come on, guys, come Par on. Par for the course. Yeah. Off of the course. Uh, what killer are you guys hyped for? I'm looking forward to the pipe kill. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the only one that I really know about that looks pretty cool. Um, uh, let's see here. Just questions are starting to slow down. Do I you, haven't. The, the, the him dragging his foot thing, uh, is that that's an homage to Resident Evil, if I'm not mistaken? You know, have you seen the, the clip where, where the doll is walking and he's dragging a knife or something like that and his foot is crooked? It reminds uh, me a I don't, lot. I don't, remember, I don't remember his foot being crooked, but I know what you're referring to. Yeah, he's like, he, it, might, it may not be crooked, but I know he's like limping and dragging his foot. Um, I'm curious to see what, what that is, what, what led to that and, and where is he going? And... Mm-hmm. Sorry. <clears throat> it's all good. Um, let me see here. What's your thoughts if Jackie Earl Haley got another chance to play Freddy? I would be fine with that as long as he had a good script and a good director with him, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. And I don't think there's any chance in the hell it's going to happen or it would have already happened. Right. Yep. Uh, if I they agree. reboot it, they're going to start from scratch. I agree. How do you feel, Cody, if uh, Don Mancini wrote uh, the next in his whatever and Rob Zombie directed it? You, you, I mean, you've you've went to bat many times saying that you don't mind Rob Zombie directing just as long as he's not writing. So, Don I know Man- that's why I'm trying to I'm trying to wonder what I would think about that because I have no <laughs> idea. Because I'm like, there's so much wrong, but there's so much right about it at the same time. I, I want to like, kill it and fuck it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm like, it's either going to be the greatest thing ever, or it's going to be a fucking train wreck. Yeah. No, um, I I don't. I mean, look, the best Child's Play movies have been written by Don Mancini. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Rob Zombie's style of directing would fit Child's Play, but um, <laughs> the fact that he would be directing a film that he didn't write would be would pique my curiosity regardless what yeah. the title was. You, you take so. the stupidity away from both of them and just say, go, work. <laughs> <laughs> 
Stay in your lane. Yeah, yeah. Don't talk to each other. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want any ideas. No passing notes. Yeah, no turkey basters. <laughs> turkey oh, man. Based. Oh, man. That, that's a fascinating question. You I didn't even know how to answer it. One motherfucker that. in this movie. That's it. <laughs> no cunts. Yeah. <laughs> one every act. One period. <laughs> Cody and CP, what is your favorite Chucky one-liner? Um, mm. That's tough. Mine's I do, fuck I, you in the elevator. Yeah, that that's my favorite from the first one. Mm. Um, yeah, that one. I love uh, in the second one, the goddamn women drivers. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't fuck with the Chuck is great. Uh, the third one's really got a lot of great ones. I like whenever he's like, he, he reveals his plan and he's like, Chucky's going to be a bro. Like there's, there's some <laughs> great ones. Even in Bride of Chucky, there's some great ones. Then the, Ain't the size that counts, assholes. Yeah. How you or what you do with it? Yeah, they they really. Uh, Bride of Chucky is is the is a heavy the, hitter, the yeah. broadest of the comedic stuff. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, that, that that's a tough one. I do plan on having like a top five um, Chucky one liners or something like that the next week. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. But yeah, that's there's a lot of great ones to choose from. <laughs> that was a negative that I didn't even get a chance to say with Cult of Chucky too. Is I don't feel like Chucky was really on top of his game. Like even Brad Dorf, like his voice acting was fine, but the lines. There wasn't like any memorable Chucky lines, and that's the only movie in the franchise that I can't uh, really. Dude, when when they're going back and forth about one of them's hair, and like they, yeah. it was it was part of a scene where they're like making All fun of. of yeah, it was yeah. just like, fucking what? Really? Yeah, you got to suck titty today. Be quiet. Yeah, yeah it's just that, like, that's... what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one that didn't land for me either. Yeah. Um, do you? Oh, damn it! I had a question, and then I touched the mouse, and it moved. Do you guys think that one of the kids in Child's Play will be killed? No. Um, Hollywood tends to stray away from that. That's one of the reasons why um, the third act of Summer of '84 was so awesome to me. Um, so it's uh, that that's something that you don't really see. I will give one full star extra if it does happen, though. Yes. I don't even care if the kid falls in front of a car. Just. Yeah. one extra star for me if they kill a kid in this movie <laughs> yeah exactly it's not taboo anymore I have some balls mm. Halloween 2018 killed a oh, kid oh fucking A man and, yep. and flirted with the baby idea oh my god dude yes <laughs> um let's see here <laughs> Ch- Smokey Smokey S's says Sherry Moon Zombie and Chucky in the same room no that's the other thing that's the other stipulation you can't cast your wife <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah you're not you're not Andy's mom get out of here <laughs> Go dance. <laughs> Andy's mom's a stripper now, and uh, <laughs> he's got a terrible life at home. Yep, exactly. Were you guys reluctant to watch the trailers, especially the second one? Thoughts on the trailers revealing too much? I think they revealed the perfect amount. I was fine with the first trailer because I knew it was going to be a teaser. Uh, I was watching that one regardless. The second one, I said I wasn't going to watch it, but I watched it because I had people tell me that it's basically one of those things where they have the first trailer kind of recut with – maybe 20% new stuff and mm. a nugget of Mark Hamill's voice. And that's all I need. Mm. If they've released another trailer, I'm not going to watch it. If they, they've released clips, I haven't watched them. They've released behind the scenes. I haven't watched them. So I think the marketing has given us the perfect amount. Yeah. I've been, I've been meh on the trailers, but that's not a bad thing for me. I, I'm trying to think the last time I was really fired up about a movie because of the trailers and kind of followed through. And this is for wrong reasons, mind you, the Prometheus trailer, I think it was the second or third trailer, was awesome. It was really incredible. The movie that they gave us wasn't that trailer, but I really enjoyed the movie. But not since then have I seen a movie where the trailer's been great and I've really appreciated the movie. So I'm not high on the trailer for Child's Play, but that's okay with me. Like That Mm -hmm. that doesn't add any pressure to the movie. Uh, There's two super chats. Oh, okay. Go ahead and read them off. I'm, uh, I'm above. Caleb J. Villa. What's up, Caleb? Uh, I wrote Chucky. I wrote a Chucky X, X script. Chucky in space. Thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Don Mancini has joked about it, and I would not put it past him. Mm. So uh, I mean, it's, it, I'm sure at some point that at least got pushed across the table somewhere. Yeah. Um, so S- interesting. Space seems to be where all franchises go to die. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Sal Screen. Uh, one more donation for a great stream. I love Chucky. Thank Thanks you. a lot, man. Thank you so much. Oh, you don't mean Charles. You mean Chucky the doll. <laughs> My CP Maybe it's a Charles. double entendre. <laughs> I love Chucky, too. <laughs> uh, have you ever thought of your own pitch or idea for a Chucky movie? I actually have not. I've thought of ideas for a nightmare movie. I've thought of an ideas for a Halloween movie. Child's Play, I haven't really 
dove into that very much. So that'd, that'd be an interesting uh, thing to sit down and kind of pencil through. Mm. Um, let's see. Thank you, Ramirez. It was such a nice place to visit with Nika and one arm Chucky share a laugh. I guess he's answering somebody's question. Um, let's see. We have seen it. That's why I ask. And one of the kids did seem like they are probably going to get their head cut off. I don't know. Like I said, I don't. I don't think as much credit as I'm giving this movie. I don't think they quite have that amount of balls. But if they do, like like CP said, a, f- a full star. Yeah. For going there. Yeah. Come back to this video if there is a, a kid death and and remember yeah. this moment because even if it's a one from me, that means that <laughs> that a yeah. kid died. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. That that would be is is a. Uh, um, <laughs> Scare letterbox review like, 96 sucked, movie yeah, 96 minutes sucked, movie sucked, the yeah. shit but some kid died so one star exactly <laughs> oh man Cody Leach question for you are you going to be ranking which Chucky from worst to best from each Chucky movie like you did with Freddy Krueger yes yes I will um, I have a lot of content planned for the week or week and a half after Child's Play, guys. So I got, I got that. I'm not going to reveal everything, but there's been a few people asking me to do some stuff that you've pretty much, you're right on the money with what I, I have planned. And yes, CP, absolutely. <laughs> Make that paper. Uh, Lift damn that skirt. right. <laughs> Shit. Printing money, talking about Chucky. Um, I'm surprised we haven't seen a space when we already seen it with Jason Hellraiser, Critters, and Leprechaun. Yep. Like I said, Dan, Don Mancini's joked about it, and I don't, I don't take anything he says as 100% joke. And what's funny is it, it, the one franchise where it could kind of work, they didn't do it. Nightmare on Elm Street, it's just dreams. What, you don't yep. dream in space? <laughs> yep. Um, Cody, if you had to make a versus movie other than Freddy vs. Jason 2, what would you make? If I had to? Everybody throws out Michael and Jason. I think that would be horrible. I know there's a fan made one out of that. I haven't watched it yet, but you have two silent killers going at it. That would be boring as shit. It'd be like, <laughs> you know, you got to have a Freddy in there. Um, I I don't know, man. Like maybe Freddy and Hellraiser or some shit like that kind of would fit. Mm. But I, I, again, like I said, like this is just me throwing out. I, I really don't want any other versus movies. I don't think it's a, a concept that you can just throw anything into if they're going to make a Freddy versus Jason two, I'd be for it, but only if Robert Englund comes back and, and you could throw in Kane Hodder for the right and the wrongs. You'd, you'd kind of have to reset um, the storyline, but I would say saw versus the collector. Mm. Mm. Just, just have them fucking playing chess with each other. <laughs> yeah. Bitch, please <laughs> think this best. <laughs> You've been dead for like 12 years. How the <laughs> fuck are you fucking with me right now? <laughs> I left tapes a long time ago and somebody found it. And now they're, yeah. Yeah. You'd have to, you'd have to retcon some. I have that, the but... next 20 years planned. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, would you play in a child's play movie? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, you want to be in a movie? Yep. A rank sleepaway camp out of 10. Tell me how you feel about it. Um, I'll defer to you for that one. How many out of ten for the first sleepaway camp? The first one, mm, f- four out of ten, and due only to the ending. It could be a two from me. That ending really saves a lot of that movie, if you ask me. Yeah, I'd give it like a seven out of ten because I have fun with it. <laughs> I have fun with it. I had fun. But it is one of those movies like it, it it's it's guilty pleasure all day. Oh. Like it's it's I love it, but I know it's terrible, and yeah. it's it's I I love it because it's terrible. Like the appeal is that it's fun that it's bad so it, you either get it or you don't and I, I would never argue with anybody that said that that movie's trash i couldn't even get my dad to watch more than 10 minutes of it yeah yeah so it's so so a lot of what like me before film school i, I i've earned some sort of snobbery i think uh mm-hmm. when you when you know what things i, I don't want to there's no way i could say this without sounding like a elitist when you know certain things that that should be happening in movies and 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 why you do certain things with the camera and, and, and acting and directing and stuff like that. When you like, I loved all these movies pre film school, but on the other end of it, like when I rewatched uh, that sleepaway camp, all these horrors from the eighties that I loved, I was just like, Oh no, I have this new information in my brain and it's blocking me from enjoying certain things. Mm-hmm. And and the script in sleepaway camp is really, really bad. It's the kind acting of the, is really bad. Yeah, good. It's, it's kind of the effect I had when I started YouTube, where yeah. I used to like channels, and then yeah. you start YouTube and you're realizing the quality yeah. and the, Lazy the effort that goes into yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> you watch yeah. somebody, you're like, "Bitch, you don't do anything." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yep, I get it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 
Cody and CP, did you like Bless the Child from 2001? I never saw it. Ditto. Okay. Um, why do you all want to see a kid die in a movie? Because it's taboo. It has nothing to do with wanting children to die. It's mm-hmm. just that children are always like they magically get out of every situation in slashers regardless of how brutal the killer is so and I, it, if a movie has the balls to go there it just shows that they're they have balls and i'll counter and say why are people so sensitive about fictional animals if a fucking dog dies in a movie a fictional dog which is okay you know after filming is done he walks home and you know gets to eat all the bones he wants why is it why is that a problem i've seen i've seen movies where people give a shit about a fictional dog over a fucking a, a country of people like it's yep. fiction it's fiction let, let let let's go there john wick mm. yeah yeah <laughs> there the whole reason you're on board with him for the whole movie is because they kill that little beagle and you're like <laughs> bitch you gonna die yeah. like <laughs> hundreds need to pay for this <laughs> yes exactly murder them violently <laughs> um what do you think the worst horror movie ever is Look, it's it's pro- it's I can actually guarantee it's not the worst ever. But the movie I hate the most is Freddy's Dead. That's obvious because mm-hmm. people tag me and shit every other fucking day with Freddy's Dead. But yeah, it, I don't know. I don't know what the worst one th- mm-hmm. that I've ever seen is, but that's the one that I hate the most. Yeah, so that's I, kind of an answer, but kind of not. I tend to swing in the opposite direction of what like if if I disagree with with a consensus. Like lately, it's been Terrifier. Uh, too many people are gaga over art the clown and terrifier i just i just there's again this goes back to to my snobbery there's a lot that happens in that movie that that shouldn't make a horror good that that shouldn't take place in a horror and i just think it's you know it's it's gore for the sake of gore people make a big deal over a big kill in that movie that i won't spoil but it's been done better with a better story wrapped around it before in bone tomahawk so like yeah it's it's horror icon starvation yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, we need something new to, whatever. And <laughs> all right. Yeah, like I, I, I like Terrifier. Okay, I was not oh, really yeah. on either either extreme. Like I didn't love it when I watched it. I didn't hate it. I was just kind of like, okay, there was some interesting things there. The clown's creepy. Pretty gnarly kills. It's it's fine. Um, but yeah, like you said, it was like it 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 hit. And it was like the horror community was mm. like, art the clown for yeah. life. And it, <laughs> it's it's totally starvation for a new icon, like a guy that kind of might have some potential. And everybody's like already giving him the fucking award. Yeah. So I'm it's, with it's, you. it's hard. You have like you have to factor in too. a lot of horror movies aren't made for a lot of money. You know, some some are made with, with no budget whatsoever. It all depends on like like the factors of the movie, like Pet Graveyard came out this year. And you know, it was a dumb cash grab from a dumb studio, which uh, Emily and I have gotten into with it quite a few times. Um, Uncorked released Pet Graveyard the week of Pet Cemetery, and the movie is—you would think it's it's Pet Cemetery bootleg, but it's it has nothing to do with uh, the, the location of where they're doing some fucked up shit is by a graveyard for pets, and it's it's just it's just not good it's it's a bad movie but there's there's nothing in it so Mm -hmm. you know there's no expectations it's just like you guys are trying to capitalize like all those shitty fucking krampus movies that come out every year it seems krampus unleashed krampus resolve Mm. like all these like yeah all right you're you're going for a cash grab but you're you're in the business you're in the business of profiting from stupid people that (laughs) see the the pet cemetery trailer and they see it at walmart for five dollars like oh shit it's out already i was just (laughs) gonna say waiting i'm like holy shit forget the inquirer pick up that uh krampus (laughs) untold for three bucks (laughs) yeah oh man yeah i I had it all depends uh, I had an email to do a, a screening of that in a review. I was like, eh, nope. Yeah, we don't we don't get those anymore. I made a joke about it. I was like, yeah, I got an exclusive screening for pet. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've made it. Oh, no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, um, at least lead it and say it was the best thing since Halloween. So. Oh, he'll, he'll never live that one down. Nope. Nope. Live that one. Better, <laughs> better than Baby Driver. Better than Baby Driver. <laughs> Oh, God bless you. I love you, Lee. Yep, love you too. Cody, have you watched Wrong Turn 6? What do you think oh. about it? I have not seen any of the Wrong Turns except for the first two, and I remember very little other than Henry Rollins in the second one. But from what I'm told, that is a steep decline in that franchise You're as well. You're very lucky, so. for the record, too, by the yeah. way. You're very lucky that you don't yeah. have to ca- catch yourself up because... 
Yep. It's going to yep. be a rough year if you had to. Yep. <laughs> they're yep. bad. They're fucking bad. Yeah, they're, they're 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 pretty rough from what I can tell. Even the first one, I rewatched the first one like a month or so ago, and I actually really like the first one for the most part. Um, but even the first one's not like you it's know, not. It's, it's a, not it's a three. It's a three-ish star film. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's the the problem is when it came out, it was like oh, because at that cool. time, yeah. yeah, at that time there wasn't stuff like that, and it was just like oh, this is really neat, cool, and yeah, as fast forward, yeah, it's like oh, you know what, it's not that good. It's all right. Yep. Uh, have you reviewed the Death Wish franchise? Franchise? If not, would you do it? Have you seen the Death Wish movies? I've seen the original one and two, and the remake. I haven't okay. seen. The I've only seen the remake, so yeah, oh. I, I really liked the remake a lot. I hey. was one of my favorite films from last year. So, hey, it's, do you uh, want to see Jeff Goldblum rape somebody? Because you'll get that. <laughs> Awesome. Sold. I Where do I sign? Original. Yeah, exactly. What? Green's over. <laughs> Cut it. <laughs> so I got to go to the store. <laughs> yeah. I, I bought the original Death Wish when the remake came out because yeah. I was curious to watch it, but it's one of those things where I bought it, stuck it on the shelf, and mm -hmm. forgot. Mm -hmm. So um, I've, I've heard it gets pretty campy from there. Oh, but, yeah. Um, yeah, you're watching, you're like, hey, is that Jeff Goldblum? Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, oh. what? That's Jeff Goldblum. What is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> A young Jeff Goldblum. Is he dressed like Thor Ragnarok when he does it too? <laughs> no, no. This is this it's is free fly. This is him without a career yet. <laughs> um, are you going to do a top ten best horror movie villains list? I'm sure at some point. I don't have plans for that necessarily, but there's endless possibilities for rankings, so I would not count it out. Um, Bush. Okay, thanks for the. <laughs> I don't know what that if that was an answer or a statement. Shaped. <laughs> yeah, 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 lightning strip. Cody and CP, do you guys agree with me that there should be a Beetlejuice 2? If Michael Keaton's in it. Uh, I've, I'm not a big Tim Burton fan, so I don't have the love for a lot of his classics that a lot of people do, so I really could care less, but I agree. If it's, if it's, if it's going to have Michael Keaton in it, that's the only thing that would get me to watch it. I didn't, I didn't say Tim Burton. I, I said, I said Michael Keaton. It, it, oh, yeah. it, it that just like, uh, Robert England is basically everything for Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. Beetlejuice. And there's only one of them. He, he really made that role. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, have you guys seen the Human Centipede trilogy? Yes. And uh, I'll be doing a deep dive in, in the first one at the very least later on. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I've seen particles of the first film. Mm. Um, I've seen enough to know that I don't want to see the rest. Um, <laughs> and I've heard how extremely m so much farther they take it in two and then mm. apparently three. It, three it's is a, a joke. It's a literal joke. Yeah. Uh, it's a movie series, much like uh, a lot of the films that CP's reviewed lately. Um, <laughs> that I, uh, I really can go the rest of my life without seeing them and yeah. I will be totally fine. Yep. Um, I don't have the the desire that people have. We're like, okay, people talk about it, so I need to watch it. No, mm -hmm. I mean, I, 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 people eat shit. Okay, I, I get it. I don't yeah. need to see it. Yeah, um, yeah. And and it desensitizes you, you too because it's, it's like, oh, this is nothing. It's just a bunch of people dying. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, how do you get advanced screening tickets to movies? Well, CP can answer that because I don't get advanced screenings to shit. The only uh, thing, that, the child's play thing is because I have connections at a movie theater and I can go watch it with them when they quality check it. That's it. That's that, That's the night before. That's not an advanced screening. Yeah. Um, being in a major city helps. Being a YouTuber helps. Yeah. Um, part part of it is you kind of have to play ball which i'm i'm a train a short train ride from new york city and when i just got started so i got i got a couple of breaks when i started i i, I started doing youtube because i was super depressed and I had a lot of sh personal shit going on a friend of mine who worked at a radio station said you know what just do that do that movie thing on youtube that you that you wanted to do and he made a phone call or two and and got me to see something early and then I just pressed and said, "Hey, how do I how do I get on lists for this?" The other part of that is I used to manage a movie theater, and I was head of marketing, so I knew certain phone numbers for certain people. And if they were still, you know, it's been about a decade now since I worked at a movie theater, but the if there was two or three people that were still at, you know, uh, I think Warner was one of them, and I think Fox was the other, where these certain people that I spoke to for. Uh, you know, marketing stuff on the theater end were still there that I just asked for screeners and they said, all right, it, it, it's, you know, they gave me the information, 
but the the catch was I had to play ball. Um, they would they would help promote the video, and uh, have people. They there's these things called they used to be called street teams. I don't know what they're called now. Where it's you know <laughs> somehow your video gets suggested into things. And um, the reason they were able to, to make a deal with me is because my theme was, will I like it? And I never said one way or another. I never said, this is shit. This is great. My thing was, well, if you like this, you'll probably like this movie. And I did it for a while. I still get a couple of screener invites, but I don't do the will I like it style review anymore. And I do see a lot of popular New York um reviewers like like uh beyond the trailer I, I keep getting the courage to go up to her and call her phony but i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to ruin it better it. be live like, it better be on, like, <laughs> yeah, live stream so where we could elite yeah like you guys watch this <laughs> yeah so, so go ahead <laughs> no no i was just carrying yeah. on with my joke yeah i, I uh I, I i still have a couple of i mean there's stuff like you could just enter on twitter just like Google uh, contest, contest, early screener, uh, premiere. And you'd be surprised if you get there. Um, there's somebody there, whoever's working that thing, nine times out of 10, if it's a screener for a movie, nine times out of 10, it's being run by Warner Brothers who just rented out the theater. It's being run by MGM, uh, Fox, so-and-so who's just rented out. You go to the people that are holding the papers who are giving out the, the things, tell them, listen, uh, if if you're not a YouTuber, if if you have no sort of way to to spread the story, it's going to be way harder for you to get the coverage. But because I was in a position where I said, "Listen, I have a couple thousand subscribers, uh, I'll 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 cover it as as well as I can and and follow um, your your rules," which I I didn't do that accidentally once, and I got punished for it. So you really you really have to play ball with them and. They need to get something out of it, I guess is the best way to put it. If if you're just, you know, wanting to go to a screener for the sake of seeing it early, um, it's going to be really hard. But if you have something that will benefit them as far as coverage is concerned, you're going to have a little bit a little bit of an easier time. Like I Child's Play is MGM. I'm I'm not too sure on that Toy Story. I know I have no Disney connections. I know I will not see that early. Um, Warner, I seem to go too early and Paramount, I seem to go too early. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's difficult. It's, it's not easy. I keep telling Lee, uh, come up here. Let, let me use your audience and, and <laughs> let, let me get in on your heels or shit, yeah. Cody, you come up here and <laughs> I can make some fucking moves with your, with your base. No shit. So yeah, I, um, sorry. About that. I, yeah. The big thing that he said is, uh, you yeah, had to be in a major city. Cause yeah, that, that's my mm. Achilles heel. There's not shit in this area. They, I would have to go to Atlanta to get how far anything is close to, huh? How far, how far is Atlanta for you? Four hours. Yeah. That's a no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, even for child's play. If I could go see child's play two days early, I still would be like, nah, I'm going to wait till Thursday. Yeah. But, um, it's, 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 yeah, the big city thing. Cause you can go on like advanced screenings.com mm -hmm. or something like mm -hmm. that and do that. They have giveaways um, and stuff too. Uh, yeah. Our, our buddy, Sean Chandler to plug his ass again. Um, we, uh, needs, whoa, really that needs. came out wrong. <laughs> 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 again. Plug. Yeah. So he, he gets into a lot of screenings cause he's in Austin and there's like everything around him. So he gets into like pretty much everything from what I can tell. Yeah. New York, um, LA, so he, Chicago, Austin. Or Dallas, yeah. yeah, exactly. The big the, ones. The bigger the city, the and again the coast, New York and L.A. If you're in those cities, you'd be surprised how often there's shit. Exactly. So, all right, we got a, a super chat, and then I saw a question that'll be good to end on because it'd be uh, interesting with him having two films out now. Shy Town Juggalo. How would you like to be killed in a slasher film? I wouldn't. <laughs> Uh, as painlessly as possible. I want the I want the death that is on the bottom of the ranking list because it's boring. That's uh, what I'm. You're a fictional character. You're just acting. Come on, have fun with it. Oh, if I'm acting, like yeah. if I'm acting and portraying it, yeah, I want the violent one yeah. that everybody puts on the top ten list. Like you know, intestines spilled out, the fucking head flies off. That that's what I want. But if I have to like, if I'm in a film, like it's life. No, just you know. Snap my neck really quick or whatever, whatever the easy one is. Yeah, yeah. No, I want something glorious where like 
it, just to to get through my fascination, like what would I look like if somebody shot me in half? Just, you know, just okay, that's what it looks like. I'm I'm all set with that nightmare yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, Caleb J. Villa, yes, I have read Old Man Logan. Very cool stuff. But this is the question I thought would be interesting to end on. Has nothing to do with Child's Play, but <laughs> since it, we've seen two films from him now, CP and Cody, do you think Jordan Peele is overrated? Where's Brian when you need him? Um, no shit. He's a, he's a good filmmaker. He's got ideas. Um, is there a little too much wind behind his sails? Yes. I concur. Um, <laughs> he he has more talent than a lot of people making films mm. right now. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of really minute details that even fanatics of his can miss very easily in his films. It's actually kind of fascinating how much how much inter well, um, inter twine some things are and how much research he does for certain themes and little things that really yeah. have no consequence to the film so i i like that um the guy has very creative ideas um but i have yet to see a film of his that i think is like five out of five like i, I think that get out was very good but i had a few i had a plot hole issue with it and then i also kind of had a little disdain for it just because of how much how overblown it was when it came out Mm-hmm. Um, and us, I had quite a few issues with a lot of the, the logic and a lot of the, 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 the explanation for things mm. and things ended up with that film where I think that the overall, the concept of that had more on board than get out from the get go. I was yeah. like really excited for more us, ambitious. But yes. But I, I ended up less a fan of that than I was get out. And I don't imagine a rewatch will change that, but it's coming out on Blu-ray this coming a week i think so that's we'll funny find out. it's funny you say that i'm actually kind of looking forward to watching it again because i know it's ambitious uh, i tend to enjoy things more at home no baby close my door please I, close my door please so i'm, I'm close curious my door, to please. See, i'll close your door <laughs> <laughs> uh, i i tend to i tend to enjoy things more at home and if i get to sit on it a little bit uh so we'll see we'll see what happens with us hey there hi hi <laughs> you gonna help us close it out you gonna help us close it out? No. 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 Okay. Keep She's going. No help. She's like, no, you close it out yourself. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, if you want to um, kind of take us out there, CP. Well, I, <laughs> I keep her kind of entertained. That's pretty much it, guys. Uh, we went through the whole franchise. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you so much for the super chats. Cannot wait for the remake. Um, yeah, Chucky's we'll, back. Hopefully, I, I'm assuming we'll we'll be together for some sort of spoiler talk as soon as Absolutely. both of us have seen it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, no, where's yep. Chucky? So, uh, where's Chucky? Yes. yes. Chucky's. <gasps> he's not in the box. Where's he at? Yeah. <laughs> he's not in the box. Where'd he go? The escape? No. No. That's that's my <laughs> channel name. Uh, in case you don't know who I am, so yes, yes. Days. Go ahead, plug yourself, please. And and um, yeah, like like Cody talked about. The, the bulk of what I've been covering, I'm I'm equally a whore. I've I, I've been getting a lot of views on these. Who would like that reviews, which are movies that are infamous, and mm-hmm. I'm doing those, and I'm doing audition next. So, <laughs> yay! Ooh, Although audition, yeah, it, it's that's got a lot of infamy for a reason. But uh, wait to hear my words on that. Um, but Emily and I do. Uh, pseudo vloggy type things every now and again and we'll probably do something for child's play yep absolutely so guys check that out please mm. audition should be an interesting one i just watched that for the first time a couple months ago mm. um thoughts yeah <laughs> um so uh yeah that's pretty much it guys as far as my stuff what you can look forward to i just dropped dark phoenix like maybe a half an hour before we went live mm. so that review is live um if time allows, we're going to try to do a stream tomorrow doing a spoiler chat about Dark Phoenix because we have some uh, some passionate views on it and uh, yeah. some things to discuss. Get your vanilla ice cream ready for that one. Yeah, I'm telling you. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, look forward to that. As far as what else to expect in the future, um, I'm working hard on that Halloween kill ranking. I've got most of the legwork done on it, so really I just had to record my bit, edit that in. Um, so I'm going to aim – for some time next week. I'm not going to write that in blood, but um, that's what the big thing that I have that's coming out soon. And then really it's just kind of building up for Child's Play, which is in a couple of weeks, and uh, a lot of Child's Play content after that. So that's what to look forward to on my channel. Um, give a CP Willis Gredia a subscribe, as well as his counterpart, uh, Emily's Adventures in Horrorland. I'll try to put both of those 
both of those links in the video description below if you're watching this not live uh, in the future. Thank you for everybody that caught us live and uh, CP. You want to take us out like uh, with the scream stream? Good. Oh, uh, <laughs> edible panties flavor of the day. Uh, today's edible panties flavor is lime.